everyone. Welcome back to... Welcome back to Disco Elysium. And hopefully our... Not hopefully. I'm not really happy about it, but presumably our... Our final... Our final expedition to Revishal. Hello, Temperance. Hello, hello. I'm just getting set up. Hi, Jack. It's <laughs> getting... Just having... having a drink. And... I got a pop filter finally, so I'm hoping everything... I'm still messing with it. Hoping everything sounds alright. Phew! Um, so just while we... Just while I get set up, just double checking everything. Um, hi Lee! Welcome! Welcome, welcome. Yes, these are all... Things we'll find on the island. Um, it's it's quite. Nineteen more or less. Thirteen communist. Forty-one, for honor. Very sorry, cop. I don't. I didn't realize I was saying so much superstar cop stuff, but it's kind. Of, it's. I've been thinking a lot about. It. It's weird to sort of go to this point of no return and <clears throat> excuse me have. I have no closure with Joyce, and I know that's because we missed it, but with Everard especially. Everard especially, it feels... Very strange. Um, but I assume that's stuff you get in, like, if you go about things in a different way, and it... And... If you... Go about things in a different way, and... Um, it encourages more playthroughs, but it's still... I feel weird not having done... Not having closure, and I'm still... I... It's weird. I still don't know who did it. Which feels very strange for a mystery. Um... I... I'm like... 60-70% sure... It's somebody we never met, which is very strange for a mystery, and like... 30-40% might be like... We might go there and they'll be like... Racist lorry driver... The sniper rifle... Being Konodioda, but... We'll see. Hello, MB! Hello, hello. I don't think I missed anything I didn't want to do. We have points, but... I think I'll save them for... Presumably there's checks coming up, so... We'll save them for that, but I guess it's time. I don't want this game to end. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. Here we go. Get <laughs> Spiritually, I'll never be ready for the end of this, but here we go. Once you get in, that's it. One pull of the starter handle and you're off into the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go now? I guess so. Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your accounts? Oh no. Remember what the net picker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth. On right, this. right. Uh, <laughs> uh, you take the engine, Kim. I'll hold the boombox. What? Uh. What? What? How else do we blast, blast Sad FM on our way to the island? What's Sad FM? Fine. Let's blast Sad FM then. What's Sad FM? Sad FM is a radio station specializing in sad, slow oh. rock songs. You seem to know its frequency by heart. Da koku. Atenshi no. I don't actually really know the low lyrics. Get in and ride to the island. Oh, we actually get to hear Sad FM. Oh yeah, Bakumitai. Dame dane! Bakumitai! Oh. Thank you. 
to a slow stop. The lieutenant turns the engine off. Then, there's silence. Wow. It's going for no. I'm in. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. In the silence, a sputter of wings. A flock of quails takes off in a the distance. There is very little wind here today. The ghost is standing still. You look at your arms, then the cliffs above you. Let's go. Climb out. Wow, okay. Do you have anything? Yes. We're not we're never gonna talk about the boots. To investigate a makeshift bridge, the bombs are power powerful enough to break the foundation. Uh, the rusted chain trails off into the ocean. The chain trails off into the ocean, connecting the island to the supply depot on the coast. This leads to the depot in Land's End. Ah, yes, so it seems. What do you think it was used for? For bringing munitions to the island, maybe? And supplies? You could also lock the bay when you raise the chain. Oh. As a defensive measure, lock it off that side of the bay. Lock it off from whom? From enemies. Enemies of the commune of Revachol. This sea fort was a revolutionary fortification, I believe. Nish. Uh, these tires are falling apart. They're at least 50 years old. I don't want to finish this game. What could ever fill the void? These stairs feel ancient. Soldiers' feet ran up them long ago. No other game has Kim in it. Attention, inflammable. Attention. There's a lingering trace of mazut in the air. Some fuel has leaked out, out of the barrel. Black, viscous. The dry grass crackles under your feet as you stop. Far away, birds' wings touch the still surface of the sea. What is that flutter? The flock of quail departs. Now more than a hundred meters away. A hundred and two. A hundred and five. Underneath the flutter. On the islet, there is almost no wind. Just snow quietly falling on the reeds. Bulrushes swaying on the waterline. Long dried leaves chafing against each other. Like a silent orchestra tuning at the beginning of some major work. Of great importance to the few who attend. Ooh, okay. To the west. A silent hiss. Sea air moving through the needles of a pine tree. To the east. The faraway roar of the city. Distant like today's dream. Before it, the sound of sand. 
The low tide filtered through its grains, a bird tending to its feathers. Snow falls on the water, melting away without even a whisper. Ahead. A low hum. The air slowly moves through a concrete box, through its ancient slits and cracks, resonating, hollow, a big building. Big building, beyond, beyond that, further north. Air flows out of a pillbox window. There is very little there. The air cossacks flowers on the meadow. Absolute silence. Reeds motionless. Bulrushes motionless. A flake of snow falls on an extinguished campfire. Hiss. Campfire. Below the silence. Call the Mama Dakwa. <laughs> yes, please. Kim. Yes? Momentarily, the sounds are swept away. Pain shoots up your right foot and into your groin. <laughs> Easy failure. <laughs> oh, dear. And we, and we boosted pain threshold. Oh, no, we didn't. Never mind. Um, have you noticed how quiet it is? I have. Is that why we're stopping? Mm-hmm. Wait, I have to listen to one more thing. The lieutenant nods in silence. I guess not. Open your eyes, stop listening. Warm air from the, from the inside of the building. It's warmer there than out here. Oh, I do love... I do love Phoenix Wright. Um, I was thinking, I was actually, one of the other things I was thinking about is we haven't had a... We haven't had, like, a Phoenix Wright style, like... I guess we had a little bit with the Hardy Boys, but argument, convincing somebody of something. I've been sort of waiting for, like, Corner to start playing and then... The objection theme. Uh, this barrel says ICM. You see a star with little specks in it. Oh, there's something down there. Okay, maybe, maybe we have to go through. Uh, the little birch from the coin-operated viewer is still holding up. No way to get up there, the stairs are gone. That's why you should have spent the points. But I might need them later! But I haven't, I haven't played, um... 999, nine persons... Nine doors, I don't remember the other part. Oh, do I have to... Maybe I guess in here. Oh. I see him. This feels familiar somehow. Um. But I do really love mystery games. Um. Still, one of my absolute favorite series of all time is still Umineko no Naku Kodoni. Nine, nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. There we go. Thank you. Kim, what is the ICM? Insulindian Citizens Militia. Oh. It's the official name of the Communards Army. The black and white army of the revolution. Oh, interesting. I didn't know. I guess, of course, we didn't know that ICM. Sounds an awful lot like. RCM. It sounds like RCM. Revachal Citizens Militia. It does. Why? The RCM may descend from the ICM. May? It's impossible to say. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Revachal West was mostly workers and criminals. Oh. Nice political thoughts rush <laughs> through your neocortex. It's going to be hard to say them. Carrying around all that weight on a busted crutch is making you. Oh, darn it. Okay, maybe maybe we should. Maybe we should. Darren's in plain threshold. Uh What I'm hearing is, we descend from the glorious revolutionary army. There were all sorts of groups and groupies school back then. It doesn't really matter. He bows to inspect the barrel. A white star. Point to the star on the label. No. An upside down star. Oh. With its horns in the sky. The symbol of the commune. Are those spec stars too? No, that's the uninhabited archipelago. A DeLorean era symbol of Insulinda, known as the face in the sea. Looks old. What's it still doing here? After 44 years? That's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Hefreiter. One of these barrels was still leaking fuel, as you saw. The city is full of things like this. 
old bullets, guns, fuel. Finish. Yeah. I guess... Okay, I see, I see. Oh, look at all this. Uh, careful, these stairs have collapsed. That's why we're gonna stand on them. Ooh. Oh, okay. Can go down. Look at all this for this last area in the game. Hello, depressed bean. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this was once an arm arm armament rest. Look at the look at all this stuff for a map we only get to see once. I love it. Twin cannons were attached here. Medium distance, large caliber. An old cylindrical generator is nested above the ammo lift, with makeshift electrical wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall, to your right. The lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel, checking for warmth. It's cold now, but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Is that... is that the... Hold on, is that the line? Is that the line? The line that he said that we heard from the future? Is that it? Wait. Haven't you heard this before? Oh! <laughs> it was! What does it mean? Oh, that's so cool! I wonder if they're- are they gonna acknowledge it? And, uh, he also says, like, it's been a cold winter, long and cold or something. Uh... Where do these wires lead? Downstairs? Somewhere? What kind of generator is this? Liquid carbon. I would imagine it takes mazout. Uh, he points to the open fuel cap on the side of the da dynamo. The kind that's favored by vagrants and fuel thieves. It's been a long winter. Yeah. The lieutenant pauses. Something seems to be pecking at the edge of his concentration. He gives you a sideways look before adding. Is that? He, know he knows. Long and cold. Yeah. <laughs> There's no time to dwell on this moment. You've got to keep moving. But I want to. I want to dwell. A hollow ring. The canister <clears throat> is empty. Dust falls from the generator and down into the ammo lift. What does this mean, a generator here? I don't know. I'm not a philosopher. Oh. That is his idea of a joke. <laughs> um... I mean, I mean, why is, why is it here? Someone with basic electrical skills has restored it in order to keep the room warm. Maybe it's the fire guy. Um, I'm not, I'm not gonna kick it when we have a hurting leg. The wind outside picks up suddenly with a faint howl. Inside, it's warm. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, look at, look at, look what we have here. Books, mostly fantastique and historical fiction. Dishes stained with sauce and fire. Survivor's kitchen. This does make it seem like it's somebody who. Well, there's Kraz Mazov. This does make it seem like somebody who like doesn't leave the island. Oh, cool. Um, plus, plus one hand-eye coordination, sleeveless aim. This found training shirt has seen one wash too many. It retains its unusual design, one sleeve short, the other long, a little of its original colors. A giant F swooshes across, across its chest, now in gray. Uh, a moth-bitten bedsheet that keeps the wind out. Oh, look at this. This be a 
I never did get the. Oh, I think we got the fallen shoes. I did. Uh. I didn't end up wearing them much because of the encyclopedia stuff, but. And I liked wearing the gauntlet boots. Gauntlet boots? The armor boots. Maybe we should be wearing. I don't know if we need authority. Maybe we should put perception on for the moment. Is this... Is this something we you can shoot through with? You see candles planted on a broken rangefinder. Oh, equip them all? Okay. Oh yeah, do we have a full set? Let's see. Pants. Shirt. There's gloves somewhere. There. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Right. Oh, and there's a hat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, glorious Falnir. You wear the full set like a true born hero. The ultimate performance of fun flows in you. Hello, cool side. Welcome. We did we did blast sad FM. I feel feel so dynamic. You are the most ultra of men. Peak performance. <laughs> Go on. The fucking sunset awaits, fun rider. Oh, I wanted I wanted to say the other dialogue. Okay, that was fun. But. But we'll go with we'll go with the the usuals. Want my encyclopedia? Not that I really need the points at this at this point, but three to core versus composure. Maybe we'll do this one. I like that you can see the tetra torn tie. What was I wearing? Oh, and what glow? Oh, yeah, the gauntlets. There we go. Ding! Lame all. But I like I like the cool coat with the little cape thing and the being able to see the tie. Oh, this just makes me miss horrific necktie. Um. Wonder if I could spend some stuff. I don't know. If I need it later. Oh, Books hello, Bryn. And magazines lie scattered on the floor and on a makeshift cupboard. They are not particularly well organized. I don't want to spend my points. Sift through them. Most are soft covers, serialized fantastique and detective stories from the twenties mm. and thirties. This disparate digest includes the classic Animal Adventures. Animal Adventures? Popular depictions of man versus nature by amateur naturalist T. N. T. Harpin, husband and wife. Widely read by people from all walks of life. Who doesn't like nature? Who doesn't want to survive? I thought it might be more like an animal lovers magazine, but maybe not. Among what is mostly commercial fiction and serialized stories, you find a magazine cathodique for electrical engineering. Then it's back to pulp. Light erotica, an international thriller about circuit benders. Someone's made themselves a home. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, does anything stand out as unusual? Heroic. Okay, good. See, this is why I saved the points. Uh, let's see what we have for conceptualization, though. I think it's only really the shirt, but... I don't think I have anything else. Yeah, there's so much to go through. Okay.
Okay, and we have two more for conceptualization. Okay, let's look. Soft covers, serialized, fantastique, and detective stories. Not that you okay. can tell. This is a digest of someone who's too <laughs> bored. Most of it is for entertainment purposes. Fittingly, right next to the radiola on the floor. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Maybe it's a little old fashioned. There's a nude mag. More than that, you can't say. Hmm. The print in some of these is pretty small, though. This person has good eyesight. That's, that's good to know. Um. Soft covers. Okay, serialized, 72. Fantastic. And still nothing. Ah. Just. Max conceptualization. Soft covers. Serialized, fantastic. Oh yes. There we go. The bed, there is a rather extensive collection of critical theory. That is, dour, life non-affirming left-wing literature published by small imprints such as Abattoir Firm and Uzia. It's not exactly like reading. <laughs> I guarantee the game will end and Matt will forget to spend at least three. Well, that's good. He'll he'll have he, Harry will get to save some for a rainy day. Um. Now, look, Kim, powerful communist theory, rigorous and truthful. <laughs> a book, left wing. I have no comments, do you? <laughs> um, where are we? Maybe we can... I mean, we've committed. We did the quest. Little moralism. Usia. Humanitarian sciences. Stands out. Not a lot of critical theory around in Ravashod West anymore. Be a commie. I want to, but I think it's too late for me. Your incendiary remark has failed to provoke him. <laughs> too late. I guess we already rejected the moral intern, so maybe... Maybe we can turn our backs. Want me to go back and say it? We're committing. Oh wait, now I have to spend the point. Oh, I better win the check now. Soft covers. Oops. Soft covers. Serialized. Thing. Oh yes. Oh. Under the bed. Okay. There is a rather extensive collection of critical theory. That is, dour, life non-affirming left-wing okay. literature. Published by small imprints, such as Abattoir Firm and Uzia. It's not exactly like reading. Here you can have a little communism. It's true, we... It's our second most thing. Um... Look, Kim, powerful communist theory, rigorous and truthful. Uzia. I agree. <laughs> she doesn't say anything different. Sciences. It stands out. Not a lot of critical theory around in Ravachol West. Your incendiary okay. remark has failed to provoke him. C -c Critical theory books, what do you think this means? Again, I am not a philosopher, but whoever has lived here, they have some education and a certain set of interests. Maybe, maybe if we're careful, we can match up by the end. Interesting. Interesting. Oh. Oh, is this more clothing? Yes, what is this? Plus two empathy, minus one composure. I like it. Technically, we ended up with um the communist. I got the communist thought before the moralist. I was quite ahead in communism first. Oh, let's let's look at our scarf. Uh plus two empathy, plight of the underclass, minus one composure, it sucks to be poor. This Taui scar old scarf itches when wrapped around the neck. It has humanitarian aid written all over it. Yet you know that thousands all over the Isola are suffering the same fate as you. <laughs> the fate of uncomfortable army surplus scarves. Oh. And yes, let's check out the bed. There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner, resting on piles of soft cover books. White linen and a pillow are visible under a worn-out caracal blanket. Someone has been squatting here. 
The linen is fresh, recently washed. There are signs that someone lives. <laughs> A flash of pain interrupts you. Oh no, okay, I better put something in pain threshold. The words out. You know, officer, you can rest here if you are feeling tired. I will keep watch. You could use some rest for what's ahead. Maybe. But when I sleep, that's when the bad thoughts come. But maybe j maybe a little shut eye, just an hour. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. Curl up with your knees close to your chest. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe. The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close. Until... Bye, Bye Kim. Time for some answers. I want to know who made the phone call, because that's still one of the things that's really bothering me. Hello, Infinity Drive. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Until... You feel yourself standing up in the darkness, right next to the mattress. Slowly, the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. Sleep. <laughs> oh? Kim? Did you go, Kim? Oh. <laughs> Lieutenant is no longer here. Go outside to the beach. Is that the way we came? Guess not. The door is still here. Closed. Feels strange somehow. You can't get in. Oh. <laughs> There's no Kim all along. How do I get out? Oh. Here we go. To be hydrated for this. <clears throat> oh, I don't like this music. I don't know what I'm getting ready for. Go down to the chain, there's something there. At the... Hold on. I'm looking. Exploring for a sec. Oh yeah, this is the dream track. Oh. 
walk into the water now. Uh, uh. Okay. You see our footprints in the water. Uh oh. Further. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Dolores Day, the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state turns around to face you. She has an airship airbag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry. Okay, don't say you need to talk right away. Melt the ice first. This way you're already talking. Laura's day. But you don't even want to talk to her. She would only be cold on me. Let her go. I'm with volition here. This... I have to let her go, man. Let her go? This is the Holy Queen of the territories of Mwindi and Insulinda. Think of the historic knowledge we could glean. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win her back. Well, in terms of historic knowledge, that's... That's a pretty good deal. Win her back? How does that fit in here? And what is the Holy Suzerain doing here anyway? <laughs> hey! Hey. The worst day. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing really good, actually. Both professionally and romantically. I've come to a fulfilling and peaceful period in my life. Well, how are you doing, Harry? You sound... Just, it sounds like Dora. Dora, Dolores. Okay. Oh, hello, Simsim2. This is missable. Wow. Yeah, I... I realized we didn't have the final dream they were talking about. So I was like, we're being recommended. We might as well, but... I'm in my head. I miss you. Well, I'm in my head too. We're all in our heads. You miss me there? Sometimes. Not as often as I used to. So much time has passed. More than it seems here. She stares at her feet, the zebra stripes on the intersection. The lights of the video rental glow in her hair. Oh, video rental. We... Yeah, we had the phone call about the video rental. This is everything I always warned you about. Something is off. I'm sorry. I was heading to the aerodrome. I just don't have time to... She stops mid-sentence, glances to her right, then looks at her bag. She means she doesn't have time to tend to your emotions. You don't have time to tend to my emotions? She sighs and looks over her shoulder. Interesting she doesn't get a portrait. I guess Dora didn't either. What are you doing? Stop saying things like that. Where are you going? I'm going to Morova. To live there, in Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. You're going that far to... get away from us? What's in the bag? Just my scepter, my globe crucigere, a spare silk gown, a toothbrush, travel documents, the crown of immortality. Crown of Immortality? Aren't you already wearing one? Oh, this. It corrects the wreath on her forehead. This is just a wreath. The Crown of Immortality is made of rarefied light, manna, and raw palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. I, I, want, I want to see it better, so I wish I had a portrait. She looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say, then over her shoulder. Anyway... Anyway, 
Can you stay for a moment? We need to talk. We need to have one, one more massive epic showdown. No, Harry. No. I don't want a massive epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Morova. Really? Look, oh, she looks at you plaintively. We don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us. Our love. Our unborn daughters. It's all gone. I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Ravishol and you. And you have to be alone. In hell. Forever. That's just the way it is. Oh, Harry. Oh, God. Whatever you do, don't try to kiss her yet. Not after that. You're still reeling. You'll fall over if you try now. Uh, that's not gonna... That's not gonna go well. It's not even right, like... Uh, Dora did have a portrait before the Final Cut version, but for whatever reason is missing now. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder... wonder why. It's... I mean, like, I'm... Can't do that. It's like... We don't need to have... D Dora's perspective on any of this, because I think we get a clear picture. You need to if you want to know the truth. Okay. We don't... I think we get a pretty clear picture at this point that... Harry's... was probably not a great spouse at all... either, but... about Harry more than here. But... It's not a very good... good way for things to be. It's not. But... But... Tell me there's something good. I don't know why I said but. There is no but. River in a dry land. Heartbeat for a tin man. That's it? That's it, yes. We've talked about it a million times. You will get over it. Yeah. Just like I did. People do. Things will get good for you again. We're in hell. In hell? Stop. You're only making it worse for him. You never help with anything. I'm not getting over it at all. It just takes some time. For you, I think it will take something like 20 years, maybe? It was hard for me too, you know? I used to think I couldn't live without you. She, lo she looks you straight in the eye. Her irises are light blue, flecked with green. But I can. She keeps her shoulders squared and her back straight. But it's clear you're still making her sad. 20 years? That's so much time. Yes. It only took me one year, maybe two. Phew. She smiles and wipes her brow in relief. So you felt that way once? That you cannot live without me? Yes. But that time is gone now. So very gone. Your innocence, Dolores Day. <laughs> I'm sorry I made you sad. It's okay. Okay, um, will this take me back to the other questions? Or... Um, do I need to proceed? Still, I guess, um... Go back to the other questions, I guess. What other things? We've been through all the things, Harry. Um... I'm scared I'm gonna press something and then miss being able to say this. Should I... Um... Hmm... I don't know what order I need to do these.
Okay, I get the feeling you're not really Dolores Day. I don't know what you mean. Dolores Day? You're... I think you can work your way to it. Thank you, thank you. You're... The X something. Wasn't I Dolores Day just a second ago? Now I'm the X thing? You're confusing me. Look, I have to be at the Lausanne Aerodrome at 10.20 p.m. I still have a light rail to catch. I haven't even bought the tickets yet. Oh. We all told you. Everyone warned you. Who? Everyone? Everyone. Literally all of you. <laughs> oh. That's not really true. We're not getting much closure. Should've stayed down. My friends are waiting for me on the platform. I can't let them wait. It's impolite. What? Oh, your friends. Say hi to your friends for me then. I will. The evening wind blows in and the gown wraps around her like a white flag. Oh. You're... The morning. The morning? I don't understand. No, I mean, morning. I'm grieving, but you're not even dead. Oh my god, Harry. Stop. I don't want to hear anything about the morning. Morning someone who's still alive. Any of that. I can't do that anymore. I'm not 80 years old, I'm 32. People my age are not supposed to mourn. This is a good bit older than her then. I've heard you before, you're the voice on the phone. Oh, Harry, you shouldn't have done that. Oh. She shakes her head very slowly, her white, her white hair brushing her shoulders. Do what? Call me like that. You ruined it. There was still a chance. You should have waited longer. She would have called you instead. I don't even know what to answer for any of these. I know, you would have called me yourself if I just let you. I was too impatient. Oh, Harry. Do you really think so? We haven't talked in years. Oh. I don't want to call you. I don't want to hear from you. I think of you less and less every year. Weeks go by without me remembering you. I wonder if this is the same voice actor as Sylvie. Months already. Soon it will be years. Every season that passes, the light gets less clear. I sit there in Morova, in the holy gratitude of my bliss. I put my hand on my belly and smile. Oh. The air gets cold around you. She looks down on her stomach, then up at you. Her eyes are full of tremendous distance and mystery. Oh, Harry. The death blow is coming. Black-eyed dogs wander the alleys. Apple trees hang their bony limbs low over the patchwork of roofs. Red and black. Revachol West, the evening sun. She's left and bloomed, far away from us, our vast soul. Your name? It's Dora. That's what the voice said on the phone. Dora is short for Dolores. Dubois, yes. Dora Dubois. It really, it really, I just thought it sounded similar, but it really was short for Dolores. So I think of Dolores that day. Why what? Are you Dora Dubois? Oh no, 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 no. We're not doing that again. That was not the death blow yet. You saved yourself. For now. Keep stumbling around, and it will happen. On second thought, you're Dolores Day, Queen Wagnant of the territories of Mundi and Insulin Day, and nothing else. Yes, Harry. I am. Things have gotten much better for me, now that I am the ruler of the known world. Oh god, it's already so late. I have to go, Harry. She pulls up the silvery sleeve of her gown to check the time. A tiny golden watch with red straps around her bony little wrists. I... I wonder if the... Harry's like... Super cop workaholic thing, like... 
was a result of the breakup or it caused the breakup in some ways. I've taken responsibility for my actions now. I'm a new man, lady and normal. She doesn't know what to say. So normal right now. Yes, okay. I'm glad. Uh, I mean, I'm a moralist. The other moralists almost took me away on the airship. I'm not a broken, insane man who can't live without you. I know I made mistakes, and I've taken full responsibility for all of them. So you can live <laughs> It doesn't sound like you're better at all, Harry. It doesn't even sound like you're a moralist. It just sounds like you want to win me back or something. I don't want you to try that anymore, okay? It's too sad. I need to go. I don't even like reading these lines, they're so sad. Total annihilation. We got annihilated, Harry. It wasn't about responsibility at all. It was always only about you having no power at all. Over her, yourself, anything. That's why they didn't take you on that airship. You're insane without her. That makes me really wonder what the dialogue is for the other quests. This feels really fitting. I brought you this figure of the Headless Fawn Rider. I don't want it. It looks expensive. I don't want it. He doesn't take it. I thought you liked figurines. I thought the figurines were for getting you back. That's not what figurines do, Harry. Then the figurines don't do anything. She looks at the Headless Fawn Rider between your fingers and doesn't know what to say. The figurines don't do anything? Anything at all. But I thought the historic figure she had. Your reaction speed sounded like it was gonna cry. Do you like war games and figurines? Yes, I thought it would be good. A form of communication where words are felt. Oh. Yes, it was a good idea. But she felt obliged by the headless phone rider to give you things in return. Things she no longer wants to give you. So she refused. That's how it goes. Your figurine rider idea was naive. Maybe this revolutionary figurine then? Show it to her. Maybe you can take this revolutionary figurine? Got a little musket. No, please. Please don't give me anything. What about dice? I had some custom dice made in this place. The Doom commercial area. Harry, I don't want things. I want to go to the aerodrome. Okay, I won't give you things then. I didn't ask for things. It's too late to give me anything. I would have liked these things a long time ago. The Headless Vaughn Rider especially. Oh. But now, only boring hell remains. I got an achievement. The figurines won't win her back. But you said I have a vast soul and you will always come back to it. We both said a lot of things. We were very young. It was her. I can feel it. I can see it in her tender long fingers. In her wrists. Her hand wrote it. Said those things. Actually, you didn't say it. You wrote it in a letter. A handwritten letter. I kept it in my paperwork. As Queen Regnant, I write a lot of letters. Brushes a, stan a strand of white hair out of her eye. You need to recite it to her. For effect. All of it. <laughs> no summaries. <laughs> sure. Have it right here. Let me refresh your memory. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Please, Harry. I just don't have time for this. Take out the letter and read. Every morning when I step out, you're asleep behind me. I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows. Until by the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me completely. I step on the light rail and look back. Something, something, bow collector. I know it will be like this until I walk back to you. You, you. Every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. 
I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul, and I will always, always come back to it. Okay, stop. Yes. Are you happy now? There's more. Kisses, kisses, kisses. Very well. I wrote it. It was morning. You slept. There was hoarfrost on the ground when I left. On Voyager Road. It was autumn. The first autumn. But Harry, please understand. It was a million years ago. No. It was a hundred million years ago. I was someone else then. Filled to the brim with love for you. Hanging on your every word. Oh, Harry, you were the coolest. But I am no longer that person. This has taken her place. It will devour you. Harry, I will eat your mind. I think it already has. The light of the video rental shines through her dress now. A DeLorean figure, cut in black, moves below. It was... It's still her. No. Her legs. Her breasts. Her hips. I was cool? The coolest. With your leather jacket and your boot-cut pants. Smoking in the bus stop. I wanted you to be the rest of my life that day. And you were. Some of it, at least. You were my first. My first kiss. My first time to have sex. The first and worst time I fell in love. I will always have that with me. It's a fact. But that is all it is. It's like a ticket stub, Harry. It doesn't do anything anymore. Ticket stub? Yes, let's talk about that too. Let's bring it up, the zoo. In Le Jardin, the day we went east of the river, to the aquarium first, I was sad about my mother. I don't even know why. The shimmer of the fish tank on my face, the octopuses. It was just a day then, but to think, were we there now, you could touch my hair, kiss me, talk to me about anything, go virtually anywhere in the world. Not like now. Now our interactions are limited to pain and regret. Oh. Can't you turn back to the person you were? I can see her in you, under the gown and that wreath. And my crown of immortality? No. You scared her out of me. With your crying, your... The awful time we wound up having. And the cheap rental flats you could afford. Can't you see? I can never think you're cool again. I can only think that way about new people. Aww. You're a better man now. More level-headed. More normal. This... before we join the RCM, though? You can get a nice place this time. I can provide for you. I was young and weak then. No, it's too late. I found someone for whom I feel the same love I did for you. Only this time, he is more careful. He will not lose me. It will go somewhere. It will grow. Your heart burns. Through the blackness, you feel oh. the treacle of blood on the mattress below you. Harry... Do you notice how none of this is very funny? The RCM doesn't pay that much. I was trying to remember, but yeah. The Kim has a fancy sports car. I, was, uh, I don't want to answer any of these. Yes, you're the least funny part about me. I hate being that. I don't want to be anything for you. I hope the decades it takes for you to get over me have already passed. Where is this Voyager Road? It's here. We are on Voyager Road. At the end of it, 300 meters from the stop. We used to come here to rent videos. They are CMs, not Kims, I guess. I guess. The 
the house? There. You could not pay the electrical bill. It became a lightless tomb. The years you spent training for the militia, my parents' money, it was not good. Surely the alcohol didn't help either. <laughs> was I... were we drinking? Everyone has a little glass of wine every now and then. I certainly do. It's a Queen Regnant thing. I don't think it was the alcohol. It was inevitability. I mean, he, yeah, he has sweet, sweet custom spinners, though. He did. I wanted to put, like, the helium lights in. What now? What happens now? What is the next thing we talk about? Is there really anything left? If not, we can always repeat one of the things we have already <laughs> talked about. Talk about it again. If you do not feel like doing that, then you should let me go to the aerodrome. Don't let her. Don't let her go there. You should redo the topics. Go over <laughs> everything. The things you didn't say before, too. Make it go on and on. Mass murderer! That is very contested by modern historians. Very contested. Plus... She tramples her little feet for warmth and adds... You're only saying this because things didn't work out between us. I have to go to the aerodrome now. I'm to kiss. I don't have time to defend myself from these accusations. Stop making her angry. She won't start loving you again if you call her a mass murderer. Seriously. You're right, I'm sorry. You're soft and good, not a mass murderer. I'm not that either. Can't I just be? Oh, uh, went up. I'm not a mass murderer, I guess it's time. is so wrong. With your feet trembling from the steps you took, tepid and fearful, you stand against her, her body close to you, radiating warmth. With your eyes closed, you move your lips on her mouth. She is not kissing you back. I succeeded. This was not about failure or success. This was always going to be horror. I should not have suggested it, and you should not have listened to me. It was always going to be horror. <laughs> I feel her breath. Her chest rising like a pillow. Warm exhalations against the side of your mouth. Her tender soul moving through her lungs. Hidden. Distant kept safe from you her cheek against mine feels like soft fuzz a bird covered in down feathers brushing against your broken capillaries the world's most precious material reserved for those she lets close enough to feel it you are stealing a touch it's not yours to take and this writing old silver against my forehead the delicate wreath on her forehead Pressing into your temple, the silver is cold from the spring evening air. Squeeze her wrist. Her hand does not return the grip. Her body is rigid. A current of unease courses through it. Hey. Distrust. For you. The curve of her spine. Her shoulders hunched. She keeps herself stiff. Her center guarded from your motions, unresponsive to your guidance. Move your mouth. Nothing, just pillows against you. Unresponsive, but for the taste of apricots. Apricot scented chewing gum. Oh. You're not kissing me back. The moment is ending. She is going to move her face away from yours. your hand trying hard not to look at you when she withdrew and you held on to her hand she tried not to look at your face and see the expression there 
Brother, you should put me in front of a firing squad. I have no words for how I failed you. Justin. You're the apricot chewing gum scented one. No, I'm just Dora. Guess I can ask all of these. You didn't kiss me back. She breathes out heavily, as if something painful has passed through her and shakes her head. <laughs> Say nothing. Stand there like a useless dildo. She shakes her head one more time. The evening wind rustles her hair, blowing old newspapers and fast food wrappings down the street. Why didn't you kiss me back? Why did you do that to yourself? You know I don't cheat, Harry. I never cheated on you. Oh, That makes me feel like Harry accused her of it at some point. Well, drunk or something. That's it then. No, Harry. Not yet. There is one more thing you have to see. She slides her hands down her chest and onto her lower stomach and smiles. I'm pregnant. It's his, the man I heard on the phone. Yes, he did it. He looks down at her belly, then up into your old eyes. I terminated yours. Don't you remember, you poor fuck? You poverty-stricken fuck. Now, go ahead. Ask me more questions. Let's talk about something else. More questions. Ask more. You're not even human. I am actually very ordinary, Harry. Below this gown and wreath, I have an ordinary soul and ordinary thoughts. The only thing inhuman about me is this. He looks around. This thing you've made me into. I'm sorry for saying so, but I just hate it. What is this? This is so far gone, Harry. I don't even... Oh, you're special. You had glowing lungs. My lungs do not glow, Harry. I am just like all the others. None of us have glowing lungs. Stop making me into some kind of... She will, once you have erected the Temple of Light. Um... I will build you a temple of light with my mind, a temple of unimaginable proportions. It will be something no one has ever done before. I will build it with computers. An immortal temple of light? That sounds nice. I do want someone to do that for me. Who wouldn't? But not you. I don't want anything from you. An apricot-scented ghost wafts out of her. Her skin. The fabric. Into the flow of the air around you. All the roads will miss her footsteps when she's gone from here. Oh, shivers. A completely different world. Don't go. I have to, Harry. Really, I've already missed the 8.30. Her fingers... I'm gonna go now. Fingers wrap around the bag handle. I was wrong. You don't have power over her anymore. You shouldn't have said that. I am wrong about everything. You should go on without me. That's not what it said. You have sworn a holy oath, Harry. She begged you not to let her go. Hold on, what is there to do in Morova? Light. Life. Culture. It's so much better than here. Everything here reminds me of you. And the horrible times we had. The nights we stayed up fighting for our dying love. I have to wipe it all off me 
and be clean again. I want to be a good person again. Oh, not this. Not what you made me into. But I swore I wouldn't let you go. You told me. You asked me to be this way. That was someone else. I betrayed her, overwrote her, and I'm happier for it. And I'm really going now. The time is up. I must be on the 1020 flight. Will we ever see each other again? I won't see you, but you will see me. What can that be? Oh, Harry. This is a dream. Can't you see? I'm already in Morova by now. Who knows how long ago this happened? A year? Two? Five years ago? How will I see you again then? Right here, tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Three times a week, at least. And Harry, it really, really looks like it started happening again. There's the video rental. Yes, we had some respite after we lost our memories, but... I'm suffocatingly beautiful. And young. And I smell of tutti-frutti chewing gum. Like I did that time when I asked you for forgiveness. After leaving you the first time. So long ago. This is intolerably intol bad. Oh yes. This is real darkness. It's not death, or war, or child molestation. Real darkness has love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. But... See you tomorrow. Yeah, that... That writing there, all of that was just... Something else. And thank you for all... Your comments here. I, I was reading all of them. I just... Okay. Oh. Fix it. You're up quick. How was your sleep? Just spit out the blood and get back to work. You're badass like that. Um. Let's solve the case. Are you sure you're okay? You thrashed around and you bolted up, half covered in blood from your oh. wound. Oh. Let's comb the entire island, centimeter by centimeter. That's the next step in the task chain. Okay. You reply simply. He's still worried. You must have really thrashed and squealed in your sleep. Yeah. Okay. I don't even know how to like process any of that. Oh. I guess we can. I feel like. Here. Not gonna make much of a difference at this point, but maybe we could stop. Feeling some of this. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. -hoo. I guess we might get morale damage sometime soon. It wasn't there. Okay. There's over here. Yeah. The hatch is jammed shut. Water rushes below, far down below. Green paint flicks off the monoblock aluminium cabinet. There are rows of switches on the front panel, a frequency band, and even a keyboard. I think there's a note, maybe? Run, you, run your fingers across the keyboard. The keys rattle like teeth. This keyboard hasn't been functional in decades. What is this, then? The console of an antique computation device. The generator upstairs, with wires coming out, they terminate here. Uh, what does this console do? Urgence, ouvert, allumé, radio diffusé. Sounds like this device was used to control the electronics here. Maybe it still does. This device was used to control the electronics in the room. It could open doors, control lights, function as a radio computer. Oh. Push light, interior. Nothing happens. Slide, radio dial. 
The dial slides under the glass, silently. You make out defunct stations on the UKV frequency. The words, Feld Insula, are written on the band. Insula. This is an off-air radio computer, I believe, used for military communications. It's an air-gapped system, an off-air military model. Its circuits are nearly impossible to bend, i.e. it cannot be remote controlled. Uh, turn, emergency open. We need to restore power before using this, officer. The generator okay. it didn't look like there was fuel in it. We should look around outside. There are barrels all over. Maybe one of them still has something in it. He looks to the dim light. He looks into the dim light in to his right. The boat engine. Oh. We could get some from the boat engine, but then we can't get back. But officer, then we would have to swim back to the mainland. <laughs> Let's just look around, okay? <laughs> the console stands by. Mute. Okay. I feel like we had some at some point, but don't remember what we used it for. We have st oh, we still have. I don't even know what some this is for. Why, why we ended up with a shot put ball. A firing slit. You can't see inside. Back out here. Ooh. It must have been a direct hit to take out such a huge chunk. Jeez. Uh, the distant sound of cargo ships. Signal horns echo on the water. See what we can find. Uh, the re the reeds sway strangely. No, it's nothing. Is there a armor helmet somewhere? The ice cracks under your feet. Be careful not to fall through. is broken. Rust has eaten what remains of the chain. A strange feeling looking at the water. Maybe you should just wander off oh. into the sea. Leave it all and walk in. But it's cold. Why? Perhaps there's someone there under the water waiting for you where it has always been. Oh. The car! In front of the video rental. On the corner, at the crossing. Join the car. Smelling of tutti frutti and betrayal. Maybe you know it's going to hurt. But it's cold. Yes, cold and still. But love is warm, like the inside of her mouth. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> no, no. We're not starting with that. Not now. Not this time. This thought is over. Thanks, Volition. Raise your sight. In the rain mirror of the bay, you see Martinez reflected. Tall edifices of ruins reach into the water, like shimmering towers. And the shacks, too. Pine trees and motor lorries, upside down. Islets and posts, like stepping stones, lead into the water in front of you. Go. Step in. It's been too long. Not now, Inland Empire. Take your head. I miss horrific necktie. He would know what to say. He would know what to do. Big Inland Empire fan. This, fan, this is the only bit I'm not super keen. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, it's fair for the skills to have... Oh. Ups and downs. Oh, even more. This does make me feel... Well, since there's money, this makes me feel like there's something to buy, but... We do get to go back and buy stuff, but... Uh, this great blast door must weigh over 100 tons. 10 tons. 10 tons. Rust peels off of it. You see a small metal door nested inside a larger one. A heavy steel blast door. There is a conventional keyhole above the handle. It's very small. What's on the other side? Another part of the island, probably. The lock looks like it could still be usable. How do we open this? Maybe this is one of the doors we don't open. Oh. He looks at the door, then at its bigger brother, then at the lock. He's right. It would be better to open its big brother. A powerful engine hangs under the ceiling. It must control the blast door. Okay, we didn't full explore it. Okay, I'll go back. You're right. We opened the big one. Um... I find us not opening it highly unlikely. All right, I retract my statement. It was naive. Let's look around and get it open. Okay. So, find fuel. Yeah, so I think it's... It's useful for all the skills to have, like, good and bad things. I think, like, one of my favorite moments was something like, um... Uh... When you're talking to, um, Si Lang and Encyclopedia's like, Oh yeah, he's from the Apricot Suzerainty. And... Um... Oh, there's... Oh, okay, I see. Stuff up there. Um... And then... You say it, and then right after... Encyclopedia's like, it's a bit of a slur. Uh, the pain in your pelvis makes you wince. Then you continue. So I, I do like it when they betray you a little bit, or not always give the best advice, but I think they do. I really like it when they talk to each other. Uh, the inside of the fortress, you make out the console and the blast door. No way to jump down, jump down here without breaking a few bones. Oh, I see. You know what we should have? I see cans. Uh, this... The depot that has supplied this chain, chain is long gone from the coast. Maybe we can't pick these up. But yeah. Fuel? Uh, a weathered artillery map showing co the coordinates in the Bay of Revishal. An old medicine cabinet, newly stocked with Dromamine. Oh, they really don't want you to die here. There's a rain-soaked mattress on a concrete slab, only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures, firing slits like two eyes in the wall. Firing slits. B triple prime. This looks like a good place to shoot from. The lieutenant lowers his voice, stepping closer with his hand on his gun. Inspect the mattress. A single-person mattress. Modern. Civilian use. Brand name. Marjorie. There's a fuel stain on the cover, along with cigarette burns. And an empty can of beans on the ground next to it, filled to the brim with cigarette butts. Pick one out of the can? The silhouette of a tobacco picker adorns the paper filter. The brand... Tio Mutiri. Uh, Tio Mutiri, like the ones we found at Land's End, remember? I may have been wrong when I said it wasn't <laughs> important. This means the same person could have visited both locations. Eid. We're gonna find the flowers too somewhere. I didn't see any signs of smoking inside though. If people live there, they keep it tidy. This here may also be a smoking spot. Inspect the wall. There's a firing slit in the wall in front of you. Like a little window. Touch the concrete first. Quite old and grimy, from years without cleaning, by anything other than the rain. Look through the hole in the concrete. 
the springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Trepidation. A tingling feeling in your stomach. A small piece of Martinez oh. coastline opens up in the square in front of you, like a tiny landscape painting. One kilometer across the water. The ruins look familiar. On the left. A towering skyscraper, its top floors shaved off by artillery fire. Capeside apartments. Rue de Saint Gislaine, 33A and 33B. You know where you've seen what Harry is seeing right now? I. I'm actually. I have a thought. Um. But I wanted to, um. Okay, so we came up the island. I don't know if it fits quite right. I can't quite. I can't totally envision it, but I one I was actually thinking about it. In a previous episode, when we started to think about the shot coming from elsewhere, if the title screen was showing that kind of perspective, because you can just about see the whirling in rags. I mean, I didn't realize that for a long time, I didn't quite realize the title screen was... Um... The view of Martinez, but then then when you see the church, this is sort of uh, oh exactly is it really the title screen? And so I was wondering I was wondering if that I was thinking about it, but until we saw this, I wasn't entirely sure, and then I couldn't quite envision the whole map in my mind. Oh wow. We need to go back and look at the end. Well, to be fair, I've looked I've looked at that art quite a bit because I was looking at buying a print of it. Um. Oh wow. Okay. Um. Towering skyscraper. Okay, on the right. The red chimney and collapsed back of the four-story tenement in front of the whirling in rags, Rue de Saint Gislaine, 10, the doomed commercial area. I mean, I, I saw it, but, um... But I could... You can just about see the whirling in rags, but... I wondered. And between the two. The box-shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags. You see a small fleck of white on the rooftop. The upstairs window of oh, Clarsley's wow. room in the rain, reflecting light. What does that mean? <laughs> do you have line of sight to the window? <laughs> what do you think? More than that. Kim, with a pair of binoculars, I would be able to see inside the room. A pair of binoculars or a scope of a rifle? You'd be prone, lying on the mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. Cheek against the cheek rest, hand on the hair trigger, on a calm day like this. Kim, I could make it. I could make the shot. Good. I think we have it, Detective. The origin of the shot. Wow. This is the sniper's nest. Affirmative. Better late than never. Nothing pointed here. Many leads pointed elsewhere. I don't want to bring that up, you're right. He looks north, over the fortification, then at the mattress. Then again, his face twitches. He's conflicted for a second. There's guilt there. It takes him a moment to rationalize it away. The shooter still be here? Where? Right here. You think so? We would see them if they were here. <laughs> Perhaps it's a... No, officer. It's not an invisible <laughs> shooter. But this island, on the other hand... You think he's here? Or she? Yeah. We should move. Run away. 
Oh boy. I, I mean, I guess, like, none of what we've seen really... Oh. You feel eyes on your back. Someone's watching, but you can't say where. Um, there's still some fuel in this battered canister, a liter or two. The metal looks decades old. The logo of an automotive manufacturer, LUM, is faded on the side. Or they can, yes, yes. Very true. Although, like, Harry didn't know about gay people. I wonder if you explained they pronouns to him. That might actually break him. The console is powered off and covered in dust. Eugène Auvert reads a dial key. Allume reads another. The frequency band says, Radio diffuse. Did this open the blast door? Possibly. Urgence, ouvert, allumé, radio diffuse. It sounds like this device was used to control the electronics here. Maybe it still does. This device was used to control the electronics in the room. It could open doors, control lights, function as a radio computer. Okay. He doesn't understand, but he supports you. Oh. Do you know where do I put this? There. This old cylindrical generator waits with its fuel cap open. Makeshift electrical wiring runs out of its side and across the floor. Yeah, where is our physical instrument too? I would... I am so curious what like high physical instrument, high half light, high electrochemistry looks like. Uh... Pour fuel into the tank. The lieutenant assists you, holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown, viscous fluid pours out, and the room fills with a chemical smell. Ew. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. <laughs> it looks like Harry being a psychopath. <laughs> oh yeah, you, you had like a high physical build, didn't you, on your playthrough? Uh, pull the rope. The recoil start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old warhorse before settling down to a rattle. That should do it. Okay. Leave. Me. Although I feel like... Although I feel, I mean, looking at my playthrough, I did a... Uh, I like high psych and intellect's all great. Um, but I ended up putting a lot of investment in Motorex. It's like... I feel like it's hard to... F it's hard to imagine me playing the game without these, because they feel like... Such an important part of it is... Or like, how you see the world and solving the mystery and like... Harry's characterization feels like it comes through a lot. Particularly in terms of, like, volition. Okay, now can we? A dim golden glow animates the console. Faint, like a ghost light. Eugène Auvert reads one dial key. Allume reads another. And I can't imagine playing without high <laughs> shivers. Your Harry was a himbo. Oh, no. It's on. Turn emergency open. I'm sure people have a lot. It's 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 sort of strange because like Harry does have does have his own personality, but I'm sure people do have certain ideas about like what canon would be. Um. Automatic boot. Turn emergency open. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. 
A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines Ooh. in. Ooh. Cool. Oh. Oh, it keeps going. After you. Um, the lieutenant gestures at the opening. Before, outside, when we were t walking across the sand, I felt someone watching me. So did I. Not back there, but I felt it since we came here. Do you have... Do you have some Inland Empire and Shivers I don't know about? What's there? I don't know. Oh. A thin wisp of smoke rises from a charred black fire pit. The wind picks up, then dies down again. What if we get into another fight? Don't worry. I have a gun. <gasps> so threatening. He takes out his sidearm, checks the barrel, then hol holsters it again. I also have a gun. I know. It was not easy to acquire. Let's go. Bye. I don't even... You've got one bullet. Oh, because we didn't shoot it. I don't really want to fight. Oh. Walk slow, it might be dangerous, so... Should be saving more. Oh boy. <laughs> Skip to it. I have a gut. He says it so threateningly. Oh boy. Oh, there's something. Oh. A rubber dinghy. It's deflated, broken. Small white. Small white flowers! Wait, wait, wait. We still have it? <gasps> These are white. These are white. Yeah, yeah, look at them. Oh, those are definitely them. I knew it. Look, look. Kim, look. Kim. Yes. Oh! I want to interact with them. Oh! <laughs> Kim is the killer. That's a... Uh... Just gonna excuse me while I ignore you to look around elsewhere. Uh... Sorry, man. Seeing what else is around. Okay, okay. You don't... You don't look familiar. Are you somebody we know? An old man, wearing tracksuit trousers, leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth. Doesn't see the deserter, doesn't seem like it. Then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids, to meet yours. Deserter. Unclouded by cataracts, his eyesight is sharp. Hi, Grandpa. He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best of him a long time ago. This man hates everything. Oh, are you the fire guy? The what now? I can't hear you. Oh, did you recently tell two kids to put out their fire? Two twins? I may have. All sorts of little rats have come sniffing around, trying to give up the position. The position? 
Sounds like a hiding place. Position. Fire guy. Regressive bourgeoisie henchman. Can't even talk like a grown-up. What? You think they're like... They're kids! You've, re you've retained your eyesight. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes. Helps me see all the shit. You closed the blast door. I did. And you opened it. How? I fueled the generator, then used the console. I should have burned that console down. He shakes his head. How did you know I was coming? Reactionary rock and roll music. Playing on the water. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, did it even give me a choice to not do that? I told you we shouldn't play sad FM. Oh, you didn't? But you didn't say that, Kim. I did. No, you didn't. We have entered a world where he said you shouldn't. It is the only world. Ah. <laughs> uh, it was... Uh, Kim. <laughs> you know, I'm sure he didn't... <laughs> Totally didn't say that. It was not rock and roll, it was Sad FM. Sad FM, huh? I always hated that station. Phlegmatic, counter revolutionary dirges. Sadness is a mental illness, a weapon of the bourgeoisie. Uh, <laughs> Sadness is a mental illness, a weapon of the bourgeoisie. I love that. I love that. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate. Hip gyrating mental illness music. So I was waiting for like our Phoenix Wright showdown. And maybe we'll have to like prove he's the killer. But instead it 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 actually feels very like this game to instead of that, we're gonna have a political discussion. Nice gun you got there. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. Is that a Bell McGrave? It's a Triangong 446. Southeast Samarin made. Exotic. Must be defunct too. No modern rifle manufacturer of that name springs to mind. A Samaran rifle. How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao commune. Military aid. He pats the rifle. It has stayed true to him. He can still make it sing. The Sinyao commune? You heard me. It's good now. Like chalk white from the ball. His gaze turns into words. He's right. Almost no one remembers there was a third metastasis of the World Revolution in the Safray Empire, extinguished in 06. Here's what Rene was fighting for the coalition. Old guard. It was not wiped from the board. I remember it. They wouldn't like hearing their name in your mouth. Damn dog. Uh, your weapon has stayed true to you. Mine has stayed true to me, too. Put your hand on your belt. We didn't actually use it. We threw a... Molotov, at least put it, Molotov cocktail. Yes. I bet you've killed a lot of people with it. You fascist fuck. Oh. Have you come to make me one of them? His right eye twitches. With what? Fear? Rage? We have come to ask you questions. Nothing more. I wonder if... The lore of this world is more confusing to me than Shadowruns. <laughs> Shadowrun is not that bad once you accept the President of the United States as a dragon who ate his opponents. Maybe that's a game to stream. I've always wanted to do more playthroughs of Shadowrun Hong Kong. 
Lieutenant puts his hand on his holster. If you do not comply, we will take you in. Do you understand? Uh, that's all the answer he gives. Um, uh, I'm with the police. You can keep the gun, but keep it down. I need to put the gun down. I don't know if he's gonna... I don't think he's going to, but... Um... Gonna ask if you're interested in playing that. I love... Um... I've never played the... I'll continue with this in just a sec. I never played the first one, but I, I loved, um... Was it Dragonfire? The, dra the second one, the one in... Berlin, and then blanking the name, in Hong Kong. Um... Love sh I love them both, but my preference was Shadow and Hong Kong. I've always wanted to sort of do another playthrough, so that might be something. Um, I needed to put the gun down so we can talk further with the police. With the police, you can keep the gun, but keep it down, not one move. No. Oh, oh, Kim. Uh, Lieutenant aims his pistol square at the man's head and says, Put it down now, sir. Or you're gonna blow my brains out before you question me. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. It's out of bullets. Oh. The old man lays the rifle down, carelessly, and looks at it lying there. Like an amputated limb in the sand. Good, we beat an easy. He stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound. A strange sadness. It's Dragonfall, like that's... Uh... What did you say? The future teaches you to be alone. The present. The present. The present to be afraid and cold. Uh, the old, the old man pulls back the hood of his plastic cape and looks up into the sky. It's blue-gray, the same color as the sea. Those words, the future teaches you. Real music. Real proletkult. That's La Revachelier, not your rock and roll misanthropy. Chanson de soldat for the black and whites. Marching song. Oh. Forget about that for a moment. You need to address that remark first. <laughs> I know La Revacholière. It's the marching song of the World Revolution. There you go. One of three. His eyes remain fixed on the sky as he sighs and adds. In Grad, they sang brave children, favorites of history. And in Sinyao, it was... Some Samaran shit, I guess. He struggles to remember, then gives up. In Sinyao, they sang... Boy with a scythe, golden sun. Uh, it was boy with a scythe. I fucking know what they say. I watched those little fuckers die in my arms. Little ones came to help us. Oh. Got cut to shreds. Oh. You don't fucking tell me what they sang. Oh, oh, sorry. He closes his eyes to, and exhales to calm himself. His nostrils are still flaring with rage. He brings himself back under his own stewardship, slowly. Uh, La Revacholière. I've heard that name somewhere else in a dream. Everyone has. They named a fucking perfume after it. No, that's not it. I've talked to her. Talk to her? Oh, thank you, Min. Oh, Min, I forgot to check in. I hope your... I hope your teeth are doing okay, and you're feeling okay from all that. Um, have a, have a nice night. Um, yes, I get these cold spells. It's the drugs you're all on. Druggies, whiners, and whores. He closes his eyes in disgust. All around you, the air slowly circulates the islet, carrying little swallows and black-beaked seagulls in its slow drift. They all, every one of them, every bird, mammal, and crustacean. What? Keep their distance. Oh. How does it go, the song? 
How did it go? He looks at his gun on the ground and shakes his head slowly. Something about shooting rabbits. I don't know. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. It's gone now. He waves erratically with his hand, annoyed that he can't remember. A little tremor passes through him. Good night, Min. It was dear to him. He resents forgetting it. So, if I can shoot rabbits, then I can shoot fascists, too. Those are the next lines. Um... So if I can shoot rabbits... I don't want him to get angry, but... Again, but... This was an encyclopedia success, so I'll go for it. What are you talking about? Oh. He squints and looks you straight in the eye. Two black beads, moist from the sea air. He doesn't recognize it. Pick up the gun lying in the sand. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stopped and patched in places with tape and wire. Inspect it closer. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm made of walnut. They say Triangon 4.46. Sin Yao Komi for Safre and for all mankind. I know Serais? This is the Vulgate Serais. You can barely intuit the words. No is stretching it. Kim, I know Serais. What does it say? For Safra and for all mankind. Oh, he asked doubtfully. That's what the little guys told us. Every day at four o'clock in the morning. They go on and on about their Safri, their mankind, and Mazov. Those men were commandos. They weren't shit on a stick like us. They were small and... He doesn't say more. The thought dissipates on his lips. Look at the butt of the gun. On the butt, you see Vespertine writing, burnt into the wood. Triangon, 4.46 millimeter. Made in Xinyao. Uh, it's as he said, it's a triangong made in Xinyao. No one said it has to be a Belmagrave. We were just guessing. The lieutenant does not take his eyes off the old man. From ballistics, it could easily have been a triangong, too. It doesn't matter if it was made in Shanti Shanti. All it has to do is use jacketed ammunition. And it does. This uses jacketed ammunition. The right type and the right calibre. Lieutenant nods, glancing at the gun. He's liking this. Oh, stow the gun. The old man Ooh. keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. Some kind of involuntary response. Something is slightly off with his motorex. Right arm, okay. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It could be used Ooh. against him to get a confession in time. We have like a recorder. <clears throat> I think that's something we need. <laughs> Who are you? My name is Josef Lilianovich Dross. Political Commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my termless surrender. His eyes turn to the reeds again, dead and dull. The Commune of Revachol? Do you mean DICM? Your uh, holdover from the... Uh, the lieutenant forgets to close his mouth. From the Insul Indian Citizens Militia. The Army of the Revolution. I was recruited in Jamrock in 07. Trained in the Ecole de Contrôle Orion and consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 43. Thanks, Logic. Wait, if you've been on the island for 43 years? No. 
I've been on other islands, too. He looks into the fire. A wisp of smoke rises from somewhere between the charred logs. I was in a resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was an E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Again, you've been hiding no, I here. Came back oh, here. Sorry. That was twenty-two years ago. Again, you've been hiding here for forty-three years. Forty-three years and ten months. That's the length of my entire life. It's too long. It's not how a human being should live. But I couldn't just forget what I saw. He just couldn't. He couldn't give up. He nods, but he can now. What have you been doing during all this time? Hiding, fishing, waiting. He looks across the water. Where evening comes, on Rue de Sanges Lane, hydrogen streetlights switch on, casting black shadows. Further inland, the street grid appears dark. Unlit avenue after unlit avenue. The temperature is dropping. Alto cumulus clouds form above Precinct 41. Two police officers step out of the Whirling in Rags cafeteria. Satellite officer Jean Vicmer inspects a series of burnt black letters splashed across the plaza mosaic. John! Patrol officer Judith Minot points west. The fishing village. She glances at her watch. We meet in 15 minutes. It's a 10 minute walk. Is the cavalry coming? The officers go, leaving behind the writing, still smoldering. One day, it says, I will return to your side. Cavalry is coming. Always waiting. The old man turns his eyes from the shore and back to you. For what? For her to return. Her. Her who? Girl child. Revolution. Uh, <laughs> um, I've been there. The city is a tinderbox. It's, it may still happen. It won't. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. The historic opportunity for a revolution has passed. Oh. It will not come back anymore. However hard I try. Whatever I do. What has he done? Perhaps a confession would lighten the load. What have you done then? Yes, what? To get things oh. going again? Fan the flame? There is no flame to fan. There is nothing left. Of the world. Of our dreams. You said you deserted your unit. I was just 16 years old. 15 when I volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. <clears throat> and of courage, too. Lapse of faith. You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat. And thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second... I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. A second is all it took. For what? For reaction to take hold. What's reaction? Petty bourgeois terror. It's in all men. Was it reaction? You're just afraid. It's the same thing. You haven't seen it. Not really. Not naked. It's impossible not to be afraid. It remains unclear what it is. He makes leaps he doesn't expect you to follow. And this was when? Uh, the lieutenant instinctively looks to his notebook, but does not take it out. May the 13th, 08, 44 years ago. The horizon was black with coalition airships. Their petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like... Like it formed the clouds. Storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was dark magic. Dark magic? 
the combined might of international capital. All at once, all the greed and terror in the world tore into Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flak tower. The gestures towards it. Huddled on the floor. The artillery was 80 kilometers away in Ozon. But I knew. I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to the map room. He looks east. A terrible shame. Still within him. The lobes of his ears are red with it. The shame and smallness of what he became. He didn't go to the map room. No. I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland. In the bunkers there, like the weakest of the weak. A mouse, frightened of the ordinance all night and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. He looks at the sky. What was that? Airships. I climbed out into hell. The landing was complete. The chain was submerged. I had to swim back. The fortress was half submerged too. Shattered. They'd all drowned in the lower levels, or got torn to shreds above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. I left them without ideological direction. It was real. I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. In what? The mask of humanity fall from capital. It has to take it off to kill everyone, everything you love. All the hope and tenderness in the world. It has to take it off just for one second to do the deed. And then you see it as it strangles and beats your friends to death. The sweetest, most courageous people in the world. You see the fear and power in its eyes, then you know... What? That the bourgeois are not human. What? Option D. I had to. I had to fight it. I had to never stop. The old man falls silent. His black eyes keep piercing your skin as he looks to some great distance behind you, shaking his head slowly, retreating from it. You're right, Lee. His voice acting's fantastic. What is this place? This island? It's not an island, Dwat. It's a defensive fortification of the commune of Revachol. And I am its last surviving defender. What was it used for? The congenitally deformed King Philip II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. We captured it in 02, retrofitted the fort with an AA gun to defend against an airborne landing. Against the whole world. You mean the landing? Retaking of Revachol? Coalition military called it Operation Deathblow. I later found out on the radio. They called it Deathblow. You are one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Caillou alone. Murderers, I know what you mean. You don't know. You haven't seen it. Iblis. Iblis? The Black-Eyed Angel. Is that the guy from Sonic 06? Shaitan Ahora, the Darkened One. Have you survived all this time? How does anyone survive? I steal. What do you steal? Supplies, vegetables. I collect rainwater. It's the life of a dog. Not a human being. <coughs> he coughs once more, then puts his hand on his belly. 
How is your health, Mr. Dross? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red, like beetroot. Been passing it in stool, too. He does seem frail. Good for his age. More like 75 than 65. Trouble putting on weight could mean cancer. Yeah. DRCM can provide medical services. You need to be looked over. I don't think he's coming in. I need to die. You don't have medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you. Toy guns. We have Dramine and other opioid-based painkillers. You must be in pain. I have been running out of that stuff. And <laughs> we just stole the rest. Um, this is a serious situation. You need to be looked over and we can do it. There's nothing to look over. The triage is in, and it's black. Administer morphine. Morrible. Yeah. How have you coped mentally? I have. I have holes in my brain. Years missing. Others filled with pain only. A decade of... You have like the... I forget what they call it, the... Creon disease, the Tsareth? I don't even know what. Inferno? Oh, you notice the lieutenant is about to say something. I would imagine it gets tremendously difficult, mentally, to live in isolation. Traitors. It's better alone. I watch the people of this city turn the lights back on more and more each year. Ruins, glimmering in the dark, like a fucking merry-go-round. No, I don't think so. Yeah, it could... Is that or just a metaphor, I guess? It's disgusting. He looks down at his shoes, his face parched from the sun and the wind. There's a wince of pain in there somewhere. Are they not heartbroken? How could they have moved on? How have you concealed yourself all these years? It was hard in the tens. I didn't have partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. There were posters, campaigns. We communards still hoped, and they needed to snuff that hope out. The East capitulated. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But Jamrock, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Marsoff coursing through their veins. Someone who never moved on, warped by his demons. In a way, this is a sight of what Harry could be. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. That's... Yeah. And others, too. Some cordons of Revachaw were still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon they all went silent. The frequency's dead. How did you get between here and the mainland? At night. I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot, the commons too. They'd started snitching. In the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... He falls silent, his gaze fixed on the shacks huddled together across the water. Why don't you just walk there? I don't want to. They're all traitors. Pigs, rabbits, and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. He does not want to see life moving on. Oh. People forgetting. Yeah. Drinking. Laughing. Weapons cache under St. Gislaine 22B. In the basement, have you been there? So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Elmer Graves, right? They were. Useless now. Rusted away. So you've been there? Sleeping. <laughs> Some nights. Ammo scrounging on others. Those McGraves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. You feel the dots connecting. 
Little dots yeah. on the map he's walked across. There's a small bunker under the Feld building. Have you stayed there? The propaganda bunker. <laughs> propaganda bunker. I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. Killed themselves? A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the ground. One more question. Do you smoke Tio Mutiri cigarettes? I do. <coughs> uh, ever smoke them on the mainland? They're good. Plenty of tar. I like that boy on the pack, too. <laughs> Reminds me of the last century. Tell me another thing. An old man looks inland at the city, the ruins, the motorways rising above it, the new Batimo twinkling in the evening sky. Said this is your termless surrender. You're with the RCM, the coalition appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. Um. We're not coalition appointed, we just try to help people. You're the RCM. You represent the Moralist International. The enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary, Le Parti Communiste dans le monde. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <coughs> a spray of blood from his mouth oh. on the black charcoal in the fire pit. I still, I mean... Rene, the royalist on the coast, said. Uh, the communard signed the Revacholian instrument to surrender. Liberal reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I answer to the Communist Party. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Because the party didn't surrender? Hey, we still don't have an answer of like why he shot. Lely though. He just wipes the blood from his chin. Honorable. Honor is a feudal <laughs> activism. My motive is class. Sure. So you're a communist soldier from the... Communism killed the dead man. Love did him in. No, I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not to the army. But you said you were trained and assigned to the Defense Corps. Trained? In historical materialism? Then assigned as a political commissar by the party. These things used to mean something. Wait, what does a political commissar do? The old man does not answer. He tilts his silver head and looks at the reeds. You see a small tremor pass through his legs. His job was to assure the army answers to civilian control and follow the ideology of the commune. Scientific communism. A commissaire politique is a night philosopher of the revolution. A future human. Ah. Uh. Awakened from shutdown by the promise of ideology. He was like a cleric, a shepherd. So you're like a priest? No. The opposite of that. A future human, not a human of the past. That means you're a trained communist, right? He nods slowly, then another tremor. Well, <laughs> I don't, I don't think he's. I, I, this would be really interesting if you were, if you were, communist. Where are we? Sixteen. Um, 
She doesn't buy it if you say you're a communist anywhere. Uh... Say nothing? <coughs> <laughs> Everyone is a re reactionary but him, of, co of course. I, I would be curious. I am curious what he says, but we're... Trying to get answers here. I don't think he'll be very happy if you say you're a moralist. I have another serious question for you. There's nothing serious oh. in this world. White it's chat. a farce. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of composure, but let's see if we can get more. What have you been using this gun for? I've used it for killing people. Killing people? It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property. I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. I like how you did that line. Interesting. During or after the war? There is no after the war. Class war is never over. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so he's continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay. Okay. Okay, what? This is it. You can feel it, like battery acid on the tip of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while. But... But what? This is what you live for. This is the shit. <laughs> the great serotonin jackpot. Okay, I'm glad we got that. The solution. Solution. Go in straight. No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Okay. Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. Get personal. Wait, <laughs> wait, so which one do I say? Nothing comes to you. Silence. Oh, His wait, oh no. Eyes look at you. And in them. A chill, like electricity running up your spine. I thought it let me go back. Into your skull. What? All is not as it seems. Timbers! Detective. The lieutenant turns to you with well-disguised impatience. Damn it. Ask it already, he wants to say. Um... <laughs> it's not as it seems. One straight, hand eye. <laughs> sure, did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel of the security contractor canal? The who now? <laughs> I, yeah. He heard you. He just wants to hear you say it again. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice. We're in. Do it, sire. You know who I mean. The worm there. In the monster arm. Yeah. Nod. An ugly piece of work, that boy. Flashes a gap tooth smile. Did you kill him? Lieutenant takes a sudden step toward him. I am a son of a welder and an officer of the commune of Revachol. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. A drop of blood in the saliva. Exhaust him with proof. Pile it all on him. Get a confession. Oh, is it time for the Phoenix Wright moment? The gun. The murder weapon is the perfect opener. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Something about the tracks. Suddenly, all those tracks are so confusing. Oh. Go with something else first. <laughs> I want to say this, but we've done the ballistics. The shot came from this island. I saw you poking around there, looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to dead fascies. Did you like the view? You had direct visibility. 
They are embrasures in the concrete, specifically meant for a top follower to use. And you had a long-range rifle in your possession. The lieutenant softens his voice. You've been here a long time, Mr. Dras. Too long. You clearly need medical aid. I'm ready to die. <coughs> I've done my part. He's practically admitted to it. Dead fascists, for fascists, done his part. Dead fas fascists, you admitted, you're admitting you killed him. You're sad for your fascia brother, aren't you? One twig got broken, now the others are sad. He waves his hand, there's a twitch, then one, then one more one in his right eye. Almost. He almost burst out there. Keep piling arguments. I don't know how much I trust you, Suggestion. You have bad advice in the dream. I don't need your cooperation. I've got this. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of guns around that use military-grade ammunition, are there? It's a real gun. Not like your little musketeer pistols. I've seen you prance around with those. Jumping hoops for the liberals. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons, eh? <laughs> Going against automatic rifles with a flame bomb. Of course you got all those boys killed. It was awesome. Oh, speaking of the guns, uh... I was... I was interested... I... Uh, the... The guy on Twitter who did some concept, like, graphic design for it, he put up... He put up some art of, like, Harry's pepper box gun, and... I looked up because I didn't really know what a pepper box meant. Um... I think it means it can fire really fast, because you don't have... But it's not very accurate, which I thought was... Interesting. You can fire fast, but it's not a very accurate gun. Which made me wonder about, like, his characterization, and... Because I wonder why Kim uses a... I don't know if Kim's is meant to be more precise, but it only has one bullet, so he has to reload all the time. Damn. He saw you. He's watched it happen. He would have a good view of the tribunal from here. It's not just empty boasting. So he saw you. Okay. So what? Don't let it divert you. Uh, we saved a lot of them. Their leader, Titus, we handled that situation. You didn't oh. handle anything. I watched it happen. You let those oh. murderers rip right into them. Got most of them killed. Even the fat one. None of those people mean anything to you. The vultures feed on this city, and you prepare the meal for them. Yeah, we do. They all mean a lot to me. Isn't it like a revolver? Yes, I think so. I don't really understand the difference, but I thought the idea that it was an inaccurate gun interesting. You're getting diverted. Push the gun. Only the gun matters. I wish Terrific Necktie was here. So you watched the fight? Did you like what you saw? The mayhem. It was all your doing. Your plan. You got them killed. You don't know anything. A twitch runs across the right side of his face as he stares the lieutenant down. Stop changing the subject, we have the murder weapon. You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? Dramatically asks, do you think we have the murder weapon? 4.46 jacketed ammunition, modified for range. We have it. This oh, we have it. an extra- Oh, yeah. I'm calling it, we have the murder weapon. Good. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and draws a single line. This feels good, doesn't it? Tearing things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. I don't, I don't know where to put them. Murder. The old man does not say more. He just glances into the reeds and then twitches once more. Like a marionette on some invisible string. This pushed him, but not enough. Just a little more. You're a communist. I talked to the dead man. He told me communism killed him. Stupid dwat. <laughs> the lieutenant looks at you with worry in his eyes. Not this, he seems to say. 
anything but this. Uh. Uh. <laughs> um. Uh. I have paranatural abilities. Nature does not behave in a paranatural manner. <laughs> Aberrant bourgeois musings, magic earl creatures, and esoteric sensations. It's all crypto fascism. <laughs> it all comes back to crypto fascism. Your brain is rotting from oh, the radio no. waves. Oh, looks at the air, then turns to the lieutenant. He does not answer the provocation. It does not look like he thinks this approach uh, worked. I don't think any of those answers would have... Yeah, this just did nothing. But still, somehow you knew it was a communist. I triple socks. How? Perhaps you suspected it before you took the case. Oh, interesting. The vision was you remembering that. What? This did nothing. Was it supposed to? I will look deeper then. The inland sea is dark, vast. Was it supposed to? Actually, I'm beginning to think he's right, and this is just crypto fascism. No, there is more here. A sliver of something, some kind of future. And a future. This pale stuff, and somehow we knew. Turn back to him. Standing there. Slack jawed, brain festering. Come on, what am I forgetting? Wait, oh, here it comes. Yes, the goddamn Maybells, the dried Maybells on Clausia's roof. Yes, although my head does hurt now. There were Maybells in the grass when you got here, they're revolutionary symbols from the war. I, I don't really understand why they'd be on the roof if you went there too. Nowhere else, nowhere in all of Martinez have you seen them this spring told you Kim wait don't forget the footprints the diagonal prints in the dust in the secret space behind Clausia's bedroom now they're gonna come up yeah I was wondering who like because we didn't never got an answer for the peepholes of course thank you head thank you you got it remember the boot prints were like no modern song. yeah maybe don't beat yourself anymore though you're not immortal. <laughs> um there are Maybells behind the victim's window. Damn Maybells. The whole island is turning white with them. He seems tender suddenly. Nostalgic even. A strange mood swing. I'm glad you're hit here, MB. I do really like all your, all your commentary, but the VOD will always be here. If you need. I know it's much later for you. So many this year, too? The spring is coming. No, it's already here. Wash the filth away. I haven't seen these flowers anywhere else in Martinez. Only here. They blossom on the islets before. We fertilize them with our blood. Resurrection was snow white in May. Before they ruined it. South, the Bay of Martinez is dotted with little freckles of islets turning green with white flowers in white snow the coast too before they piled their containers on top of it filled with broken useless trash for fat fingered bourgeois children to play <laughs> with you must get around a lot to stay undetected all these years do you know any secret paths pinball workshops pinball all comes back to pinball Lieutenant's voice is soft, friendly. I may. Curious tremor passes his face. A young woman called Classia. Ring any bells? These dried flowers were behind her window. Classia. He knows her, but hadn't heard the name. Yes, Classia. You hadn't heard her name, had you? My ears don't reach the city. You know her, right? She had intimate relations with the victim, the mercenary. With the victim. He turns his sight from the whitening field of flowers and falls silent. Then the muscles in his jaw twitch, a spasm. There is a small tremble. Looks like a smile. A crooked smile. 
yet isn't quite voluntary. He's about to burst. Don't leave any loose ends. Get him on everything. Not a fan of Funko Pops? Not particularly, personally. Wonder what brand of boots you're wearing. Everything is brands with you individualists. Who cares what brand my shoes are? Sansa. He looks... He looks at Some his... Shit. Oh, he looks at his running shoes covered in mud. Show me the soles, please, Mr. Doras. Fucking imbecile. Oh, <laughs> him, I mean. <laughs> the old man stretches out his leg. A black and white spiral pattern covers the sole... The sole of the worn-out running shoes on his feet. The maker is called Sansarique, and the size is 42 to 44. These are not the unusual horizontal pattern soles you saw in the dust on the floor of the hidden room. They do, however, seem to be about the same size. Indeed. The size fits, but not the sole. Can put stuff in drama. Wait, maybe it's simpler than that. Sire, he doesn't have to be wearing them. Right now. I was thinking that. People change shoes. It doesn't mean you weren't there near the room the victim died in, sneaking around. Racking those brains, are you? Desperate to report something back to your masters? They must have really loved that dead fuck. Oh. The lieutenant gives you a quick sideways glance and nods to acknowledge. The prints were his. You can see it in those eyes. He can't keep them from flickering looking for something. The old man stares at his own prints in the ash around the fire. Silent suddenly, some strange process within him. A gush of wind. Seagulls in the distance. You know who he was. A coalition trained murderer. Armored and armed. He was human. The blunt end of a hammer. Dripping with blood. I don't even know what to say here. saying you didn't deserve it beating us to the ground moaning with joy you hounds get so thorough when a company train killer dies i haven't seen you on this coast for 40 years you know maybe i should have killed one sooner got your attention now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement now you come to investigate. Not when they die by the hundreds. There's another victim of war. Exactly. I I didn't know how to... Also, we didn't know him. I had... Ah, it wasn't for this guy to pass judgment, though. This is it. Shot him. Shot him. Say shot him, not killed him. So you shot him. Oh, the inhumanity. One paramilitary less in Revachol. You can almost see him squeeze a tear out of his eye. His fists begin to tremble from the anger. The lieutenant raises his right arm to hush you. Hush. He does not need to be pushed anymore. The ball is rolling. It's really tough to pass judgment on a dead guy you only know through secondhand accounts. Exactly, exactly. While the lieutenant listens, holding his breath. Hold your breath. I had them in my sights. Both of them. Him and the whore. I was breathing with them. In phase. And I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. That's a confession. He begins to smile. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death and that stupid look on his face. And his dick still in her. Then... 
I mean, I guess from this class, you covered it up, but... None of this was her fault. I'm glad I didn't arrest her. Nothing to do with it. Then what? Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning, there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white. Or what's left of it, anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. Oh, yeah, I was gonna ask you, Lee, what you did. But I, did, I wasn't when I finished. But you didn't arrest her either. Yeah, I'm... She did get people killed. Okay, but... And so they did. So they did. Mr. Dross, are you aware you're confessing to murder? Lieutenant asks after a second of silence. Yes. Skill point. Single word is all he gives. And you were looking at them? The victim and a young woman having sex? Through the scope of your rifle that night? Before you shot him? Lieutenant takes out his notebook slowly. Very slowly. The old man nods. Why? Because that's what they were doing. He shrugs, then smacks his lips. The motive. This is where the motive yeah. is going to come from. You can coax it out of him. The lieutenant's preparing the ground. I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. Yeah. Why were you looking at them that night? I'm always looking. He cocks his head to the side, then turns his eyes to the city. Another tremor passes his right side, lower in intensity. Back to motive. Why did he do this thing? Why? Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? I'm just trying to understand. Why? A rifle scope has the best magnification. Yeah. And if you don't like it? Click. You pull the trigger. Yes. Think of it as a form of critique. They're gonna be an art cop line after this. He will not stop now. These dialectical materialist types never do exploit it. Okay. You've got him going. Connect every little piece now. Wrap this up like a gift. Start with when he first saw him. It will give him a chance to ramble. Um... Uh, I'm just gonna save, so that, that's it for now. I ain't going. Yeah, just want to say. Oh, got this. Honorable one, you have accumulated a substantial amount of honor points on what? your life path. What? You are a man most virtuous. What? Uh, now? We're doing this now? Um, there were honor points. Of course, there were honor. Did you think no one was paying attention to all of your honorable deeds, honorable one? I only try my best. It's the most any of us can do. Oh, the modesty on this one. Another ten honor points for you, <laughs> sir. Now? You are on the fast track to becoming one of the rarest, most revered of all police officers. An honor cop. Ah. <laughs> uh. My honor is my life. It's King Richard. Yes, your deeds are spoken for you, honorable one. But to fully drape oneself in an eternal cloak of honor, a ritual must be completed. Actually, I think it's mine honor is my life. Right of honor. Even among the honorable, only the most dignified are deemed worthy. But you, oh honorable one, have excelled in honor. Oh? Honor comes from deep within you. And to truly know oneself, to know one's honor, one must reach deep within oneself and touch one's honor. Okay. You need to bring the thumb of your right hand, your sword hand, to your right uh. and stick it in there to form <laughs> the arch of honors. <laughs> What? I don't know, just like that? Outside? What about people? What about Kim? What? People will be in awe 
admiring a police officer most honorable in a sacred ritual of uttermost righteousness. Am I... You... You... You aren't gonna forgive me if I don't do this, are you, chat? I do not want to do it, but... Kim gets mad. All I ever wanted was to live with dignity, to die with honor. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm honoring myself, Lieutenant. I can see that. But do you have to do it where everyone can see you? Um... <laughs> you look shocked. Have you no self-control? Please spare me this sight. They're realizing the naivety of this question. He looks at the ground. The lieutenant is a noble man, but he does not know honor like you and I do. Best not to waste time trying to explain. Lead by example. Oh, how dare you? You made, you made my points go down. How could you? You know, this is the only thing I live for in this game. Congratulations, honorable one. You have become a member of a noble faculty. A man kneels, and honor cop rises. Go forth and commit even more honorable deeds. And should your resolve ever waver, remember the right of honor. It will always cleanse a man's soul. This is... Thank you, thank you, Jack, for being on my side, but... It is an honor oh. to serve with you, honor cop. To be honest, I don't know if there's enough game for... for the minus four drama. I'll read it. They say nameless heroes need no credit. Doing the right thing is reward enough. But deep down, an honorable man knows there will be a reward. Oh yes, the honorable shall inherit the world, and you, Comte de Honor, will lead the charge with a thumb held high. What you need is a creed, an oath, a great oath of honor. Flex your honor glands, see if you can come up with something. Twenty minutes? No, I don't want to tank my... Well, I don't- there's no thoughts I want to get rid of at this point, I don't think. I don't want to tank my drama that much, honestly. Oh, hold on. Let's do a proper save. Yeah, I don't want to do it just in- I don't want to tank stuff. I talk to Kim for 20 minutes. Does he have anything to say about that? Yes? No. Uh... Um... Items... Oh! Uh, oh, I was gonna put on composure clothes. What do I have? Those are composure for a moment. Composure. Well, if I need those points for something else, on composure. Composure. Perception. Is that my is that my most plus three? A quick save. Let's see if we can get that. Minions of Capital. 83. What do you want? What oh. strikes you about this gaunt man is not the stomach pain, or the cough, or the malnutrition. For a man who spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild... Yes, surprisingly okay. Indeed. He speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. 
Above all, he seems animated. Animated? By what? It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures, thought processes cut off like threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings, bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. Great leaps of emotion, from anger to grief, despair. Oh, dementia? You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. Oh. When his thoughts move, they are lucid, keen even, not senile. Wouldn't a foul temper be a byproduct of his life? Perhaps, but his seems more than that. The inner turmoil takes unexpected turns, as if forced on him in a way. In summary, you sense Aww. some underlying neurological disorder. Mr. Dross, are you okay? How is your memory? No, I'm not okay. I shit blood, and I'm surrounded by insane people. <laughs> there it is again. Erratic hand motions. Bouts of rage and the stomach thing too, of course. Okay, now putting my regular stuff back on. Because I want, I want my good... I like my esprit de corps coat. And I want my... Perception boots. I guess we don't really super need perception. Saving. Um, I need to grab some more water. I, if it's okay, I'm just gonna be back and just... Three minutes, maybe. Thank you. Because I feel we still have more to go through. BRB. Okay, back. Thank you. I think I just saved. <laughs> it's not okay. I'm back. Millions it was quick. Of capital. What do you want? Um, when did you first see the deceased? Three weeks ago, when the rich hag came in on oh. our galley. Her honor guard came in tow. Honor guard. Oh. Honor guard. Joyce. He means Joyce. I thought you mean Joyce Messier, the Wild Pines rep. Wrinkled up whore. Oh, pfft. <laughs> Me? Um. Mm. Moving on. The victim arrives sometime after. After her. They moved into a deserted apartment above the roundabout. Radio equipment out for all to see. Reactionary radio playing. Sloppy drunk. I've seen their kind during the landing. Those Occidental and Mest Phalangs weren't conscripts. Boys like us. They were whites. All they know is to destroy and hurt. Whites? Barely alive. They like to kill while they're on their drugs. After the landing, in the burning years, 
I would take shots at them. End them. The worst ones, if I had a bullet to spare. I could see they've returned now to show their real face. The face they don't dare show their bourgeois voters back on Mundi with their families and polyester clothes. Uh, what specifically did you not like about what you saw the night of the murder? Them. Fucking. I didn't like that. Uh, okay then? Splat. A bloody spitball lands on the firewood. Uh, been looking at anything else you haven't liked? A tragic comedy. Druggies, prostitutes, and rentiers. A strange little engine seems to fire up in him again. It straightens his back. The familiar putt, putt, putt of hatred. More specifically? Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez... Martinez is the worst. Oh, Lee, you're playing Persona... You're playing Persona 4 Golden. I got the... I almost... Good thing I don't have window capture on. You could have been outed for all. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world listening to race-themed radio shows in the ruins, in their lorries. Points inland. Pump full of steroids and Radio Revachal 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Huh, Mr. Clare. Yes. The fly lava in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe the Third, a syphilitic murderer, on the town square oh. to spit on the working class. Let him finish. Do not interrupt. Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachal at least pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins. Intense, like animals, like those boom boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. Keep shaking his head with sorrow for the sight he missed. No! They're our friends. That all? The worst of them is the blood drenched Sucreon on her yacht. Licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. Her gun toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cock parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins, too. Renee! Every morning he's there, while the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon, or Quayam Moran, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. He's... oh, okay then. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain. It's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frisell is now dead. Uh, I have some questions about this. We did good when we pushed him under the horse car. Until, in the 30s, those disco whores. <laughs> Uh, he breathes in, his breath heavy with hatred. You cannot make out a single word. Not disco! The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center, leaving only a nonsensical sputter. There was something about a statue and nihilistic advertising agency people might be worth investigating. 
Disco whores? Whores. His holy says, even that word has to be pushed out through his teeth with great force. The rage seems too hard. Well, sex sexism is... You do have something in common with Renee. Uh, there was something about the statue on the roundabout and syphilis. Syphilis is a disease Philip III contracted in a whorehouse. The statue is an abomination. Abomination? The bacteria entered his brain and made him squander trillions on sparkling wine, cocaineum, and monuments of himself. His son, Philip IV, the insane, contracted syphilis in the womb. Cocaineum. That is technically possible. Although Philippe the Third was not actually syphilitic, he was just a man. <laughs> and he still went on to govern Revachol for 25 years. We lost two million lives toppling that mode of government. And those grotesque statues too. Hundreds of them. But it's still there. What a keen remark. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's still there. Do you know why? Uh... I like, but I like the deconstructed version of it. It's a uh, um. I don't think it's cynical advertising yuppies. I think it's an interesting art piece. Um. That's right. Some advertising. I mean, it ironically was pretty good directed though. Directed a cynical deconstruction of it. We tore it down with honest working class plastic explosives. And there it is again. Shakes his head in disgust. I put a cool sword in the horse's mouth, though. Art is a bourgeois establishment. <gasps> it's an affront to humanity. Every gallery should be bulldozed. And the artists should all be given 30 years of hard labor in Yekokata. I was starting to have sympathy for you. Sympathy for you. <gasps> How could you? Wait. It suddenly strikes you. Perhaps it was not as it seemed. Actually, it was not deconstructed so much as captured in the moment of the explosion. What are you talking about? The ancient communard cocks his head. It's not a mon monument to Philippe the Third anymore. It's a monument to the. It's a monument to the monument of Philippe the Third exploding. What is this madness? Dim light comes on in his eye. The lieutenant too has cocked his head. And is looking at you with a strange expression. It's not madness. It's a monument to what you did. To your program of destatuing Revachol. So you're saying it's a communist monument now? It's art. Not only. Yes, and furthermore, the design bureau people are probably left-wing too. They often are. We did always have the prettiest posters. Yeah. Maybe you're right. That is how dialectics work. But understand this, art is still a bourgeois institution. I mean, the institution of art is, I guess, but... <laughs> and they all should still be sent to Yekokata. I don't know about that. Could we not? Don't be squeamish. It is commonplace to relocate the workforce as the need arises. All nations do it. It's called... Settlement. Some kind of bourgeois huh? fascist. Say, and you are still an incel. That's it for the statue, then. Tell me, Mr. Dross. The fat union man let them put it there. Corrupt as he is. Probably got a fat check for it, too. Shared with the law. Accusations of corruption. Push them aside with a sharp change of topic, officer. Put the heat on him. Hmm. He keeps having opinions about the union's leadership. Benjamin said that communist. I don't have to be that angry. Communists respond to the aestheticization of war through the politicization of art. Oh, interesting. Is that. I mean, Walter Benjamin, you mean? 
I need to reread some Walter Benjamin. I've had I've had some books sitting on my shelf for a while that I haven't gotten. I feel like I need to read reread Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction again. Uh, you mentioned the union is a is social democratic, and Mr. Clare is a farce of a social democrat. Another hideous disappointment. Unions are the real enemy. The true enemy of the proletariat. Placating huh. the masses. Yeah, I really do like Walter Benjamin, too. He's one of the ones that always sticks out, f sticks out for me of things I really enjoyed reading. Disappointment. So personal. He displays a familiarity with the Union's top brass. Was a disappointment, Everett Clare? That deformed toad? I wouldn't expect him to wipe his own ass. I mean, the brains of the operation. The smart one. Uh... uh the only thing about not having closure with Ed Everett, which I was talking about earlier, was like... He was clearly like his twin, but that never came up. Edgar. You mean Edgar? Everard's brother? So it fi it's finally happening. <laughs> he talks a big game about uprising and social base. They must have sent the smart one to some university in Le Jardin, where it's alienation this and hegemony that. He's been sweet-talked by this Edgar. They must have met in person for such animosity to have developed. Oh... Not the first people you've met from the city, are we? You can't live alone. He stopped poking at the ash now, just shakes his head. The Clares wouldn't miss a man hidden in their own backyard. Not all this time. Nothing happens in Martinez without them knowing. Yeah. Of course. Maybe the Clares oh. asked them to. Don't go straight for the kill. Exhaust everything else first. Yeah. Soften him up. Uh, have you approached them? I haven't approached anyone. I hid. It was Edgar who came to me. And fine, I, I meant to bring it up earlier, but it, I was kind of baffled that so much had come up without the fact that there were twins ever coming up. How did he know you were here? He didn't just stumble in like an oaf. He figured it out. Some kids told him about a monster on the island. I told you, he has brains. It points to the path leading to the tower. Stepped right off the boat and walked down where you came. I even kept the door open for him. Thought he was a man of the <laughs> left. Wouldn't rat me out. I was right about one of those things. Uh, when was this? Twenty years ago. Oh, wow. Neither of them could walk now, could they? They were less fat then. Ugh. Less fat phobia, please. That's around the time the Clears came to power. Uh, what did you talk about? Edgar did the talking. Paid his respects like I were a fossil in a uniform. Offered platitudes about the struggle. Flaunted his pink degree. Even quoted Marzov. Never trust a social democrat who quotes <laughs> Marzov. Oh, and charity, too. They love their charity. Offered me blankets and social housing. I still have the gas cooker he brought. <laughs> and he let you be here? Let me be here? The ZOC is an unlawful successor of the commune of Revachol. We took this fortification from the loyalists. Even the Clares understand this. They let him be here. Understanding was a courtesy. But why such a courtesy? Yeah, I feel like even if he's not aware, they must have used him. Mr. Dross, did you kill the Cornell mercenary for the Clares to incite a riot? I'm not doing anything for that swine again. He shakes his head. Again? What have you done for Edgar before? Try teaching him some Marzovian socioeconomics. They didn't stick. We parted ways. Okay, he didn't do the hanged man for that, but he's insinuating something. There is more here. You can feel it. Oh. He was not outright lying, but almost. Logic. Uh, we have. You can put points in. 
This is red check. The connection comes to you like a splash of cold water. Dark, cold water. Twenty years ago when you met Edgar, the Clares didn't run the Union yet, did they? <laughs> Sputter from the old man. He acknowledges it. Here we go. A twist behind the dark bend. Red checks are so sc I know, I ever since I lost a 97% check, I get really scared. <laughs> Who did? That bourgeois cow. Tiffin Holly was her name. Licked the rich man's hand every time he came to town. Never seen a labor leader so hot on mutual cooperation. Ain't Holly. And money. She liked that too. That Holly was a real bridge builder and a deal maker. She was also a woman, wasn't she? She was. And she was real soft on those money men. Had a Barbara Muscova bag over her shoulder that she liked to bring to work. And then she just disappeared. Called in, they say. On the eve of battle. Ran away. Vanished like a piss stain. He squints and smiles at the black logs. No, that's not quite it, is it? Did she? They say her daughter called in. Right, her. her. Personally. But that wasn't really her daughter, was it? No, I guess it was not. You could swear, you could swear you see the embers glow again under his eyes on the dust. Edgar had someone make the call. Why is that, Mr. Dross? She couldn't make the call herself. Yeah. Here it is, the bend in the river. Why? Because she was dead. Timing. Just say nothing. Ain't nothing. The cow caught a bullet in her right lung. Fell into the canal, grasping her tit and drowned. Or bled? Hard to say. It was a sloppy job. And a moving target. She was going home, waddling. Dressed in yellow. Drunk like she often was. The ruins are black around her, and she had a yellow leather bag under her arm. She tried to cross the canal. Heading home to Grand Coron or Betancourt, some place like that, where they build those new batements for the people who flourish in the hell around her and the ruins. You shot her. Someone shot her. Or maybe the cow just fell. My memory is full of holes. All I know is nothing changed. Not in the material base, not in the hegemony. There was no uprising, just words. The Union fizzled, sogged. Nothing came of it. Nothing. Edgar didn't keep his part of the deal. Ah. <laughs> Sputter again. Nothing. If you were to testify to this, give the RCM something on Edgar, you could walk. The lieutenant says in a voice even calmer, as if it were nothing at all. We would strike everything you've done and process you as a POW. You were in a war. You were on assignment. We could even extradite you to the Samaran People's Republic. A degenerate worker state. Go shit. No, thank you. I'm Reva Sholian. My days are short. I will rot away here in a moral intern cell. I will not testify to anything. <coughs> you did do it. I saw it happen, and I liked it. That's all I have to say. I didn't live and fight for 40 years to end up as a collaborationist. I've heard it on Channel 8, 40 AM, Radio Revachal, late night. Everyone is a blobber in this world. Everyone betrays everyone. They're all already locked up for betrayal. The best ones, the ones with heart, were slaughtered. Trampled. He looks to the city. The same old freezing hatred. There is plenty here to work with once he's in custody. And the lieutenant knows it. 
He gives you a little nod to proceed. Uh, by the cock parading in his colorful uniform, you mean Renee? Every fucking morning for 34 years. Throwing that ball. One ball against the other. I've always loathed that game. That is not a working class game. I don't care what they say on Radio June. Royalist ghouls played like it was life itself. Click, clack across the water each day. And that uniform, like a parrot plumage. I won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race. A patank maniac race traitor. Whoa, let's back off before you get too agitated. What is there to be agitated about? The unholy ghoul. I love him there. He reminds me of everything we fought for. At least we killed Afristel and his kinsmen. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what to say. I'm glad we... Does he even know he's dead? Glad we talked about this now. Glad? It's all gone. Uh, is this something new or... Is okay. Curls and glad? I guess... I guess it's time. So did we not extract? We do everything? Minions of capital. What do you want? You can tell him. Uh okay. Uh his lip curls. Every royalist ghouls play. I remember him. Okay. I remember him from Lanos. Not him personally. His make and model. There were tens of thousands of them. I thought we took them all out before the liberals came to their rescue. We missed one. That one. With a shaky finger, he points to the city, toward the crater near the plaza where a lonely pine tree stands. There doesn't seem to be a single person under the pine today. Not even Gaston. Alone. There's no one there. Fat and plump. Like a pheasant. Just begging to be popped off. Please, Mr. Truss. Shoot me. You'd like to kill him? Not yet. I like to look at him strut around, place the crosshair on his medals, right on his face, and just fiddle the trigger. Think about it. Let the bonbon melt in my mouth. Save the treat for later. Lieutenant asked cheerfully. He is a juicy bonbon, that one. A real treat to the black day. The blackest. When I put that gun in my own mouth, I think. No, don't waste it. Put this lead in that cock, René. For the boys he killed. And then I look at him throw those balls, and I suddenly feel. Let's add a wistful sigh. Better. I even hid one bullet, so I'd always have one for him. Haven't seen him around lately, strutting around. Must be down with arthritis. I hope it hurts like hell. I hope he sweats blood. Yeah, about that. Hearing it may destabilize him. Are you sure you've gotten everything from him? Um... I think we did. Rene is dead. He died of old age a couple days ago. No. Yeah. I waited too long. I waited too long, and now he's dead? Cause me so no, Lee! No! I'm sorry, Mr. Dras. I understand you knew him for a long time. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that's the... yeah. They're all dead now. Fuck it. If he really wanted to kill him so bad, he would have done. There must have been a thousand black days on these islands. His health ailing. I'm sorry. Fuck you. Cared about him? All human beings care about each other. I cared for seeing his head explode. Now, God damn this world. He reminded him of himself. The same hatred. 
the same. You try to think of something else, but no, it's just hatred. Are you okay, Mr. Dross, to go on? You think I haven't seen people die. It's all I've seen them do, fuck and die. All the other plans we had, to love, to colonize the pale, it's all fucked. He's not okay. This is just another black day in a row of black days. Something strange is keeping him together, making him endure. It is a black romance. An idea told to him by grown-ups from radio towers and leaflets in beautiful print when he was still a teenager. Everything is possible if we fight. Oh. And then he lost it. So did they all. Glad we talked about what? Yes, it's time. Yosef Lilianovich Dross, you're under you're under arrest for the murder of Ellis Cortinaire. Is what you plan to say. Before you can get past, you're under. The lieutenant interrupts you. Officer, are we sure? We could maybe get more. Is there more? One more thing. The old man looks at his rifle in your hands. A little startled for some reason. You startle him. Maybe it was a silence. He quickly gathers himself. Still, what could he be afraid of? One sec, let me save. No. Kim, are you? Minions of capital. What do you want? Three with Joyce. He means he draws shallow breath. Them. Jealous. For him oh. to stop reacting to stimuli, to be broken off okay. from the world, cordoned into darkness. Okay, I'll keep looking. And I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second. Writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But you can't have everything. This man has seen past her, like you did. And now he longs to see uh, her covered in blood. To punish her. Okay. How long had you been watching her? Since she came to Martinez. I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning, behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then. Just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast? What was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. Oh. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her, smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. What do you think she did hid there? Her passport and ticket to Villiers. Passport? <clears throat> and from there, to Cachet-Bru. In the free state of Seminine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the Pale. Some kind of hidden container on the coast? You looked into it? Yes, after she'd gone. It was a submersible. Well made, actually. Sloppy, we should have gotten her to tell us about this. Did you take the documents? No, I never... I never got anything about this. No, I put them back. Why would I take them? I'm not going to phone. No, I mean... No, yeah, I never got anything about this. I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean and bruised all over. Black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. Probably didn't press her hard enough. That's, that's fair. I... I backed off quite a bit. I could see who she was, too. A spook. On the run. Revachal's the cloaca of capital now. All the bagmen and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. Does it matter you're compromised? I was very compromised. You could tell she was a spook from the documents? She had different color hair on the photo and glasses. Forged. 
Some sordid bourgeois affair. I've heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. Oh. The bruises. You can't make that out in a scope. And you could see her bruises through the scope of a rifle? You can't see bruises through a scope. It's just a blur. How does he know those minute details about her body? It quickly comes to you. The bruises on her body. Any chance of seeing them through a hole in a wall? Oh, yes. Cutting those drugs oh. of hers into little lines with a knife. Masturbating. Oh. Did you make that hole? With a clip point oh. knife. Good for listening in, too. For hearing the moaning and the snorts. Or see her through a window on a roof? Like that, too. Yes. Bending like a bow against the glass. You've been through the secret route behind the whirling and rags. Those were your footprints there. You just changed your shoes. I've been through all of Martinez. Every nook and cranny. And that too. Yes, that too. The things they did in that little room. What she'd do to feel good. Funny the way light works. You turn it on inside, and it gets so dark out, you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the twenties, when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit. My but... god, love, love did the guy in. I thought, I thought it meant like the love between um, Lely and Classia was responsible, but no, it was this guy's love for Classia, wasn't it? Those two took the cake. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. One more loose end down. We're doing this, detective. Yeah, both did them. How did you get in there? The hidden pinball workshop. I can just walk in there now after a good wash. I told you, they think I'm an antisocial. <laughs> Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen's empty. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois game merchant lived there. I don't know, 15 years ago? He left spare keys all over, and I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. He points towards the whirling in rags. Andy found use for it. A spare key, like the one hanging behind the Union box window. You wanted to punish her, so you killed him. She practically breastfed that Ugh. man. You wouldn't believe wow. the thing she let him do to her. She shakes his head and stares at the ashes. You stare at them too. In your mind, her innocent stay still turns to leave. Airport bag in hand. Silks flowing in her wake. The dream. See you tomorrow, Harry. Her voice rings in the evening air. Burning. <laughs> Say nothing. The old man raises his gaze. Something glimmers in the corner of his black eye. A bitter taste on his tongue. You had feelings for that woman. There's... There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? Oh. Man needs to feel something else. It helps if you have your eye on something there. Something pretty. It's weakness, I know. Can't believe I almost missed this. There have been others? Yes. Over the years. It's not unproletarian. Oh. To feel something. Was that why you left the dried flowers behind her window? No. Why? I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying, like a child, in the corner of her room on the floor, like she does sometimes. When was this? The day after I killed him. Oh, and you brought her Maybells? Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. 
Oh. It's as if something put the thought there to leave the flowers. Something put the thought in you? A compulsion? What do you mean, put? He raises his eyes, they're round and wide. A brief flash of terror. I just got this feeling from what you said. Do you agree? Maybe. I told you. I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. Oh. He wipes his eye. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. One more down. So in conclusion, it wasn't about him. It was about her. Her. He repeats, staring at the ashes, then the reeds. There's a twitch in the corner of his eye. The lieutenant nods okay. at you in acknowledgement. Got the motive. That's it. Motive. We have it. Where is she, that Clasier? I haven't seen her there for days. She got away, but she led us here first. She figured out someone was watching her from the sea fort. Gone. I knew it. She kept staring into the scope this last week, at the island, like she knew. He sighs. She'd look, at night, crying or smoking on the roof, staring right into me. It doesn't matter. Midtown, across the Bay of Revachon, snow falls on 40-story towers. Above them, Lusanne Central Aerodrome. A cocoon suspended in the snowy sky by a web of suspension wiring encircled by hybrid aircraft. Look north. On the platform, a young woman is withdrawing from amphetamines, barbiturates, and alcohol. Yet still, she smiles among the crowd, among the great ghosts of the city she's leaving for another far south. Smaller, distant, hidden. Not like the great chandelier she sees sparkle in the night below her. Street lights, towers, tenements and water. And across it, a dark strip of ruins, barely visible, if she didn't squint her eyes. There, on a dilapidated jetty, in a nameless village, two police officers and one special consultant look across a narrow strip of sea. The ruins of a sea fort stick out of the water, built by Philippe II, reappropriated by the commune, then lost in the landing. He's there, doing what exactly I don't know. Satellite officer Vitmer points at the ruins. Behind that anti-aircraft something, that's why we can't see him. John! Special consultant Heidelstein <gasps> is optimistic. Trent! We'll see the boat when he comes. Let's go get a coffee until then. I know this interesting little place where... <gasps> His voice trails off as the three walk down the jetty. As the men go, patrol officer Minnow looks back over her shoulder at the crumbling fortification in the snowfall, like a rotten tooth rising out of the water. I, I, like, I like that description a lot. Good luck, Harry, she thinks. You need something good for this. Ooh. The old man has fallen silent, okay. staring at your feet. The burnt logs in the fire. We're good now? The old man stares despondently at the logs. It's like he's forgotten you're there. I assume we're good now. What? But you said I would be taken to the... Probably. Uh-oh. This terror is the sum of all the uncontrollable movements and mood swings he's been exhibiting. The wind picks up. The silence on the water is broken all around you. Little shivers of waves appear. The lieutenant continues, like an incantation. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Uh. Do you understand? Do you understand? But... Kim, he's afraid. No, 
I don't want to. I have to stay here. Oh. Looks at the reeds, eyes submerged in growing terror. He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Oh. Now on to the boat. First, first say, does it have room for three? Not really. We could escort him to the pier, then either one of us can take him inland while the other stays here, but... So shy and lonely. But then, who watches him while you're coming back here? Who watches him there while I come back for you? You come back for me? How about I go and send a boat back for you? Uh... What is this farce? This is a fucking farce. I can't. Lillian, you could ask her, maybe. I can ask these first, right? Um, maybe I can just ask that net picker to watch him. This is no harmless old man. The lieutenant shakes his head. This fucking world. This world. What is this? Uh, below the confusion and rage, a fit of jamais vu like yours, the thought passes, more pressing matters take it takes its place. No, listen. Listen now. Listen now? Um... There it is again, to your north, as it has been since you came to the coast. The reeds whisper, stalks rubbing against each other. What? And then, in the middle of it... Something completely different. It sounds like a bow, very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin, made of reeds and rushes. Cavalry's here? Maybe there is room for three on the boat. Shush, Kim, do you hear that? What? What are you talking about? Is this... really us? Your skin crawls. delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. I came! Kim, I want Kim, look! Kim! I think he's looking blink. It's still there, an unfolding <gasps> mechanism. Of reed like kiting hovering in place. We're not gonna shoot it? What is that? What are you talking about? The old man looks at the reeds, then at you. The giant stick insect! There's nothing there. He looks confused. The stick insect is <gasps> over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. You feel your legs shaking under you, and your gun hand move to your holster to grab the gun. Don't shoot it. There is. I see it. Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. No, oh no. Kim, Kim, can you see it? I can see it. <gasps> yes, yes. Four simple words, thank God. If you can see, then you're not insane. But that means it's really there, spinning slowly, in absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. Inspect the phasmid, Lieutenant whispers, then takes a step towards the giant arthropod. We need- oh my! It's a task. Go do it carefully, it may be dangerous. This... oh, Kim, do you still have your camera? Still have your camera? Yeah, death save, quick double save. Get your camera. Oh, the creature man. stands on long, stilt-like legs, 
antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. The segmented antennae move with apprehension, searching for something that's not there. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. Such a big smile on my face right now. The hiss is different oh. from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Who, who needs to put points in electrochemistry? Oh, laid pheromone on thick. I did do that. I did do that. But let's let's listen carefully. This is the Insulindian phasmid. It is. <gasps> oh, that's the camera. You hear the familiar ring of his jacket unzipping slowly, painstakingly so. You glance over your shoulder. The lieutenant holds a piece of milled aluminium. He begins to pull it open extremely carefully. Oh. It's the camera. It flashes though. Careful, careful, careful. No. The flash will scare the creature off. Warn him now. Kim, the flash is loud. It won't like that. We need a photo. No one will believe us. Continues to pull the lens open. No, Kim! From the corner of your eye. You see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the phasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ear. Stop, let me approach it first. I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. Yes, yeah, stop fiddling with the camera, but does not put it down. He's letting his pride get uh, away. Kim! You see the phasmid turn to him. Its mandible antennae reaching out. Its motions are quick, sudden. Cares what they think, Kim. Understood. Of course. Comes to abruptly. Says with a nod. The spindly mechanism turns itself back to you. Its antennae taking their measure of the air. Slowly. Say something to it. Quietly. Something like... You exist. A sudden chirrup fills the air. The walking stick moves its whole body. Limbs working independently of each other like the parts of a masterfully constructed machine. It moves just an inch closer to you. Or does it only feel like it does? Something in its body language has changed just slightly. Corpse will be marked by stars. I don't remember what that one's from, but... Laid the pheromone on thick! Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Oh. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. The puppy. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Smelling me. Maybe it is real, the pheromone. <laughs> the tense mouth is agape. D don't you regret not getting some, Kim? About now, he is ready to believe in anything. Yes! The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales, the shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles at its abdomen continue expanding like lunglets. Breathing you in, your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. <gasps> Raise your hand slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. Oh. Put your hand down. The invertebrate comes back to life, stridulating. 
Sets of complex eyes follow you, moving in tandem on either side of the insect's small head. Hello? I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. I don't want to scare it off, but stand on your tiptoes and look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before. Like burnt roses. Kim, it's foaming. Careful, it may be poisonous. Lieutenant watches you apprehensively. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one, letting out that same smell like summer burning. Apricot blossoms, <gasps> white blossoms erupting, a sensation like cold hands on your face. Spoke <gasps> to the hangman, did not give up on the phasmid. Yes. Nose, nose of partho, parthenogenesis. I need it. <gasps> Exist too. Tell me what he's like for you. What? I tell you what will happen. Then I will tell you what he's like for me. For me, it's fire. Burning. Fire? Where? <laughs> inside. I do not have fire inside me. In me. There is not even blood. But Ling. Like sap from a one palm. Love it. I love it. Now, I will tell you what it's like for me. For me, it is a series of half leaked images. A kind of darkness. Being intruded upon. Transient. Deep. Moist. Intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals. And internal sensations. A swarm of sounds. Tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. Wow. I am at the end of an narrow funnel. Weightless. So light. It only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul, and if I did, it would never burn. Glad to be me, an incredibly sensitive instrument. Few of us can begin to imagine the horror of you. It's all of creation reflected in your foreplay. It must be like the highest of hells, a kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. Even when you're sleepy, and when you wake, you carry it around on your neck. With eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great, mute, empathy for you. It was very disorienting at first, but I'm keeping my shit together. That must be incredibly hard. The orthobots are in silence and meaningless all of you. Know that we're watching. When you're tired, when the vision spins out of control, the insects will be looking on, rooting for you. Oh. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up. Bud from you, banner-like, blossom from you and carry you apart in a sky funeral, in honor of your passing. But not me, because I'm just a leaf eater. <laughs> oh, wow. In honor of your will, Lieutenant Euphrater, that you kept from falling apart in the face of sheer terror, day after day, second by second. Oh, honor of your will. Detective, arriving on the scene. Oh.
detective arriving on the scene. I am a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the killer. He's in a bad state. Deteriorating fast now. He thinks I am beneficial to him, but I am not. I only quicken his deterioration. You're destroying him? Very slowly. And only because he won't go away. It is meant to keep them from noticing me, to interfere with the pictures in their heads. But he has looked at me for too long, and I am destroying him. Wow. Is this a dream? What is happening? No. You are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Where does this come from? All this, around us, the world. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. And all we can do is beat our fists against it, day after day, with no answer? You can also eat it. <laughs> if it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Yum yum. Or read. Yum yum. Wait, so... So you look like a reed, and you eat reeds. Yes, they don't mind. Have you accidentally eaten another reed phasmid? Yes, I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter, and I woke up at the wrong time. What? It was an accident. What? <laughs> you cloned. Ate the little ones. Oh. Yum yum. What exactly are you? I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insolandia Isola. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molting, calming myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. Owning no one unnoticed by the first settlers, and the land surveyors of the Sussuran. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Samanese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. Wow. I have stayed here in two full forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolution District of Martinez, March 51. Love them. That's insane. No, you are. The moral of our encounter is I am a relatively medium life form, while it is you who are a total extreme madness. A volatile senior nerve system ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. What? Wait, the pale is human made? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You're a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. Ow! We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Wah. Worse how? Everything your eyes touch goes back there. Behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if? He misplays us all one day, or just forget. Um... I always thought this way? 
No, you're only thinking it now. This is a revelation. I've, I've already forgotten the whole world once, when I drank too much. So, it is already happening. Soon, one of you will close your eyes and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Uh, uh. Am, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that, no. What does it look like? You're just staring at it. Then... And I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why would you even say that? Um. Ah. Uh... Um, case is meaningless compared to this. I've totally transcended the case. I think we should take the picture, and then you should back away from the unstudied species. Oh, I don't want to say goodbye, but... Because I know if I say goodbye, the game will end soon. And hello, the last 200. Hello. I have to go now. I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. No. There is one more. Of all the creatures I met, you are the most beautiful. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you before you go. That woman. Turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. For all mankind. Wow. I will. She was held on Earth. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell oh. you that. Oh. Okay, Kim. Take the picture. Okay. With a slow ring of metal, the lieutenant slides the lens open and raises it to eye level. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three. Two. One. The shrill flash of the <gasps> camera. Cuts the air like the blade of a sword. Oh. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant. Hypnotized by the flash, it stands frozen before you. Oh. It's incredible. The sweat on your arms feels cold as ice. As if you're frozen as well, in the shadow of this great statue of chitinous marble. Now, oh, I guess I didn't look too closely at them, but they they put out recently at the Disco Elysium store. They just put out some postcards. Um, oh, and I think I didn't look too closely because I didn't recognize this, but one of them is this one. Um, for the key art, I think. But I didn't recognize it at all. I didn't even realize what it was. But I was mad because I was looking at the postcard prints and like... I was mad because Kim and um, Trant were in different sets. Also, funnily enough, for the postcards, it doesn't look like you can buy normal Jean. You can only buy Wig Jean. I got it. <gasps> you hear the lieutenant whisper as the creature's shape develops onto the photo paper in his hand. A polychrome gross ghost of white streaks against the reeds in the sky. And you has a shadow before it. Immortalized. Oh. For all time. Slowly reach out and touch the creature's whisker. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the kiting curls into a spiral, like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. 
It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young vine. It Be careful, oh, detective. It's moving. Look at your finger. Feels like nothing. The anthropod in front of you stays frozen. Look at your finger. It tastes like sugar, very faint. The anthropod towers above you, tufts of reeds pointed from limb and head alike. Odorless, mostly comprised of water. <laughs> Carefully pet its scythe like forearm. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. Oh. Its hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning! Uh, warning? Put your hand away. A sudden shiver passes the limb. Looks like the creature is awakening, wave by wave, from its stupor. Some sort of countdown process is happening. That's all you have time to okay. think. Okay, we got it. Back off. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. Disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. Thank you. I love you. And just like that, it's gone. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. Lieutenant looks north with his hand raised to his brow. Can walk on water? Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. Only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. <laughs> so happy Kim was there. What's that in the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. Okay, what now? What now? The old man behind you repeats suddenly. He's put his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Just leave him. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to okay. check on him. this yes brother you've managed to collect all the armor pieces too bad it's too <laughs> late for the big showdown i don't think the helmet would have helped me anyway <laughs> look down at your wound yes it would have looked very impressive oh i got the achievement still you found it all now your mortal coil is completely protected Few cops are this futuristic. At least now I am truly invincible. Oh. <laughs> oh. Look at that in a sec. Plus one half light. Head as as battering ram. Minus one suggestion. A fighter, not a lover. This monstrous looking bug-eyed ceramic helmet was in the phasmid's nest. There's still some reed sticking out of it and smells of seawater. But otherwise, but it's otherwise wearable, if not particularly comfortable. Putting it on feels scary somehow. At oh, armor armor percent speed run. <laughs> kind of took a while, but we got it. Is there something if I put them all on quickly? And the greaves. I guess not. Uh, might as well keep the perception boots on. We, although that, we haven't seemed to be having much authority now. Check the phasmid. Check on deserter now. This is, we're just gonna leave this for the whole time. What is it? 
What do you want from me? Oh. I can't go. Something is very wrong with him. Oh no. Sir, how could you not see the fa- Oh, I forgot to look at the scope. Sir, how could you not see the phasmid? See? He stares at the reeds and falls silent. Mr. Dras? The man does not respond. He keeps staring. Aww. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking with fear and longing. Touch his shoulder gently. The plastic cake feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? It's not great news, Kim. The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. What happened? What has happened to this man? Old age and shock. I think it's the phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. Quite a few things about that health check you did on him make sense now. Couldn't see it, Kim. It's just the reads for him. That could be part of the shock. But you're right, something is off here. Mr. Dras. Touches the man's shoulder. No response. Maybe this is how the Phasmid has stayed hidden all these years. Or, no, it's not that. The, the... Let's see that the other. No response. Then how did we see it? Oh, you mean, whatever does this, does it all the time? Teenagers, kids, drunks, oh, settings okay. are brief. And Ham's not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it. Yes, you forget it's there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be the reeds? The, the, the. Mm. the doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is a little advance for a nurse. Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed strangely animated. He was energetic and articulate. After all these years alone, with little hygiene or medication, I would expect worse. Perhaps this animation is induced by something in the phasmid? It does not seem to be animated now it's left. Honestly, I'm ready to believe anything at this point. Maybe it is psychoactive. I mean, why not? It's three meters tall. He takes off his glasses and cleans them, and when he puts them back on, he's still staring at the sea. Could it be there's something hormonal in his relationship to the phasmid? You mean pheromonal? Oh, yes. Uh, seemed a little off for a man his age, Randy. <laughs> oh, Harry. The scope, knowing of her bruises, his disposition toward Miss Orania. I see what you mean. I talked to the phasmid. It said it's destroying him. You should be more careful, detective. Are you sure it wasn't having an effect on you? Uh... No way, I was talking to it. Are you sure? You were looking at it for a long time. Almost as if you were hypnotized. Th were that's, you hypnotized? That's communication. Maybe. Anyway, it's only trying to remain unseen. Degradation is a side effect. A valid hunch. Long-term exposure to something like that could be neurodegenerative. Also, please be careful when approaching a known species in the future. Detective. Of course. Okay. Oh, we got our points back. He's been in here for a long time. Who knows how much of it in its company? He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like he didn't want to leave this place and the insect, maybe. He looks at his notebook. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all of this. This will be one hell of a report. <laughs> Thank God we have the photo. Oh, his, his inland empire is awakened, finally. No one would believe you without yeah. it. Yeah. We found some things in the phasmid's nest, Mr. Joss. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Should have looked Perhaps at the scope. Show him the ceramic helmet. Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left. Wherever he is. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the ebb would put it back here. This makes sense. 
Mr. Dross could have picked it up. Or the phaz made even. If it did, this is incredible. Show him the detached scope. I... I lost... You lost it, Mr. Dross? He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie phasmid. Uh, the lieutenant observes the lens sparkle in your hands. This sight is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor bee. I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. The strength has all gone out of him. Just frail old bones in a sack of tracksuit trousers and a windbreaker. Oh, hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. Yeah. We... We're at the time when time doesn't change anymore, so... It won't, it won't be too long. This is it? This is the end? Uh, a common 30mm th sniper scope attached to almost any bolt action 446 caliber. It uses an older style non-dotted range-finding reticle. Seaweed is still stuck on the lens and it suffered water damage from its time in the Phasmid's dowry. Driven mad by survivors, guilt, and loneliness, and stick bug pheromones. Oh, I feel really bad. Oh, the return. Use the boat to return to the mainland. Yes. Hi. The proper save. Uh. I don't know, man. You deserve a point volition. Just in case there's something else. I feel bad for the guy. Yeah. I mean, he makes himself... Like, he's understandable, and then he makes himself really hateable. But in the end, it's just so... Pathetic. And sad, and it's hard to know what to say. Anything the else? Old spring <laughs> we can sleep again. Yes, any time. If you need <laughs> rest later, it's okay by me. You don't have to be a hero. Goodbye. I can feel like it's on the conclusion the Phasmid did. Oh no. I feel like. I feel like the credits are gonna roll as we. as we take the boat. But. I don't think I need the freak bag right this second. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Let's. We are done here. He says, adjusting his glasses as he looks over the water. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Oh? Two men <gasps> and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. Trent? You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. Trent? <gasps> Look what the tide brought him. Yes!
This is a man without sunglasses. Suddenly his expression changes and he tilts his head. Harry, you're bleeding all over the place. You're half dead. <laughs> the true final boss. John is the true final boss. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just Here seen. Here he is. This is the man with sunglasses from the whirling in rags. But where are his sunglasses? Look at the showdown. <laughs> Oh, please tell, please tell me why, why you wore a wig. Wait, you're the man with sunglasses. That's right. And you're bleeding. Uh, forget about all this. There's a giant. We're not forgetting about anything. Look at you. He points at you with both hands. No one else seems bothered by the bleeding. Bothered by it? Harry, you look like you need a fucking organ transplant. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Let's not get into that. Who are you people? Hello, I'm Trent Heilerstrom. I believe we've met on several occasions. <laughs> Trent! I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicumar, and this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. Oh. Special consultant Trent Heilerstrom, Battle Officer Judith Minot. Hi. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. <laughs> he sounds. He sounds scratchier than I remember. Lieutenant Kim Kisoragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. I like this music. The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. He adds, suddenly regaining his confidence. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant. And not a naughty boy. <laughs> naughty boy! But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. Uh. No, Kim, you gotta have my back. Let's destroy them. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. Uh, she says warmly, flashing the lieutenant the tiniest of smiles. Letting the lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm he's oh. about to perform. Oh no! Oh no! What is this about? Ari, we want to help you. Taunt, I believe this is where you come in? This is the horse-faced woman. I don't know why you named her that, but it was beyond idiotic. You should never address her using those words again. And Oh, right, because th that's what her title was. I never said it. Um... I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. <laughs> Me too! That's that's what I do! My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. Why are you here? No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? Shit kid? <laughs> What, what kind of an insult is that? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, kid. What an interest in Monica. Yeah. Uh. What's a shit, kid? You. Shit, kid. That's you. Despite all that you've done, the deserter, the phasmid, the case. Despite all that I've done? No. Because of all that you've done. How, how did you... Okay. You aren't the man with sunglasses at all. You're not even blonde. Guilty as charged. I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to <laughs> see if it was true. Oh no, did stream die? Is this... Is it okay? It's bad? Okay. Okay, we're good? We're good? Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, just checking. Thank you. Oh, so that's- oh, so that's why- Okay, okay, okay. So, Trent- okay, Trent was brought in as like, uh... For us, I guess. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. <laughs> He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. Uh... I don't 
like being lied to. I want to ask all these. I don't like being lied to. I didn't lie to you. No one lies to you. You were so fucked up on booze you couldn't recognize your own body. I want to see the other. Us, and it was. He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. Maybe if you hadn't been so sarcastic, I would have realized I knew you. I'm clinically depressed, Harry. Sorry if I wasn't in the mood to batter you up after you told us to fuck off. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. Yeah. Actually, I suspected something was off. Did you? Or did you literally not recognize my face? We've been partners for how long, Harry? Don't answer that. You don't remember. John is a satellite officer. Yeah, I remember that means being promoted for being your partner. Oh. Absolutely no idea. A hundred years. Thanks, Encyclopedia. Judging by the familiarity you feel toward him, two years minimum? Or maybe a short but close stint on the task force? He's right. Don't start guessing. Now's not a good time. Uh, how did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you uh -oh. went. Oh. <laughs> I saved it. I saved his establishment and he still betrays me? Strange. He didn't mention that. In fact, the establishment didn't look saved at all. There was a giant I.O. graffito in front of the building. It was on fire. Yeah, I lit it on fire. It was a poetic gesture. I knew it. Didn't I tell you, Trump? I told you it was a shit kid. The line is from Lu Jiatun's Mirova 82, isn't it? About girl child communism, the titular returning character to ghost the apparition of. Good choice, Harry. <laughs> he looks around and noticing the impatience of his companion stops himself. He is correct. It was the Serai's poet, Lu Jiatun, who, in the 50s of the last century, composed that. Don't encourage him, Trot. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um. I still want to know why he brought his kid to this. I was joking about it being like educational, but if his thing is neuroscience, then it probably was. You, I'm sorry I didn't recognize you before. It's okay. I didn't come here to gloat or to fool you. Neither did he, actually. We're just worried. That's right. Worried. I'm always worried about you. Every time you don't show up to work, or when you do about... Stink. <laughs> You're a worry fest. She's worried about you. I'm worried about you. Even Special Consultant Backpedal is worried about you. Everyone worries. Instead of working. Oh. He's got a very, very solid case there. Actually, I've been trying to find a good moment to tell you. You're worried too, Rhetoric? Yes. You often sound like a brutal idiot. Oh, oh. So, Trant Heidelstam turns out to be special consultant Trant Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Trant Heidelstam. I never said I wasn't Trant Heidelstam. <gasps> what? What was up with the kid then? Mikael? Mikael's my son. Oh, oh yeah, and what's up with all the interesting history? Spying on me? No, I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead. And Mikhail wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. But there was a murder investigation! The culprit was still out there! Him being there with his son, it was not a coincidence. It's difficult to see, but he was worried about you. And also interested in the <laughs> Feld building. Uh, so what are you special consulting here? What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. Like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory... He's here to see if you're insane. <laughs> he is smart. Let's move on. Duped again! No one's who they say they are! Duped? Hey, here's a brilliant idea. Don't be a morbid drunk and you won't be duped so easily. Gardener, scab leader, this. Tell me at least you are who you say you were. Yes, I'm still Kim Kisolagi, still a lieutenant from Prison 57. Still caught up in this crossfire, oh, no. too. Uh, you mentioned a task force? Yeah, Major Crimes Unit, under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicamar. Ring any bells? 
Uh, refresh my memory. Who else is in this? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn major crimes unit. There's you, me, Jude, drunk fucking idols down, and Guillaume, baby. Yo? He stares at you. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. <laughs> oh, fuck you. You're part of this shit show. <laughs> We're all together here, Trent. Uh, yeah, who's Guillaume Bevy? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Tron because I'm forcing him oh. to stay. Oh. I do feel really bad for them. Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde and partial <gasps> to sunglasses? Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde with sunglasses like you were? See? There. He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me, I'm G Bevy. It was going to be funny, but then you really did have brain damage. So not so much anymore. You were G Bevy. <laughs> you you were dressing up as our co-worker? To me. <laughs> no, I'm like, the, yeah, that's cool. I said, <laughs> it's really weird. Like, he does not. The way he's acting, he does not seem like he was trying to make a joke. Like. I don't know what to make of this. I love all this though. <laughs> I am dying. This is my longest stream, but I keep going. <laughs> he was trying to be funny, but then. <laughs> he sincerely thought it was going to be amusing for both of you. Oh. I think it's supposed to be funny specifically to Harry. Gee, Bevy. And we didn't laugh. Oh. No, I'm just like, Jean's just been so angry and mad. Yet, he did the whole, he really did spend the whole time in, in awakened sunglasses. Okay, so what does this unit do? Do? It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We are shit here now, Harry. Because of you. Oh no! They're your posse. Or what remains of it. Hand picked. Hand lost. Oh. That's... that's great. The 41st isn't... He trails off, not wishing to finish the sentence. Where have you been all this time? There's a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. Shifts his weight, crosses his arms, and looks you in the eye. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. You're detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. Uh. <laughs> All will burn. Um. Wait, you left me face a squad of trained killers alone just to teach me a lesson? It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was gonna be a tribunal, did we? Uh... Said all those things? I'm not like that anymore. Yes, you're sorry. You're the sorriest cop who ever lived. Nothing has changed, Harry. I've heard this repentance shit a million times over. I'm sure... I'm sure you have. Unless is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia. Episodic and semantic. Not great. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola. Hell, and so on. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him and 
I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. He really just rolled with it. That's what's that's what really makes me laugh. He just rolled with it. Interesting. Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? Okay, um... <laughs> Wait, socioeconomically? You think I'm so poor I lost my memory? Not when you phrase it like that. But I don't think critical theory. I know everyone thinks this is far-fetched pink academia, but still. I don't think it should be off the table here. What? He lost his memory because of capitalism? <laughs> okay, I like that. No, not like that. I'm not talking Vredefort's cool here. But Harry, I asked you, what do you think happened? Um... I drank so much, I mean, that's really it. <laughs> capitalism. Uh, I want to say all of these. I drank so much, I lost my memory, and now I'm slowly recovering it. He is. He's getting better. And I can confirm that he drank a lot of alcohol prior to it happening. <gasps> Thank you! Back up! I believe he drank. People do that, especially this one. What they don't do is forget their whole life because of drinking. But Detective Big Man, he has blanked out before. I have? Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case. The other, when we looked into that mural. Is that the mural in the case files? So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. Don't remember not... Oh, wow. The two cases in your ledger. The unsolvable case and the next world mural. Oh, yeah. Those were recent. Those cases were hard on you. Yeah, we beat a guy up. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. This was intentional? What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. Gestures towards the scenery. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He just need it for its end. What? Okay, Trump, thank you. That's <laughs> absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. We just solved a crime. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. I'm ready to lead again. No one even mentioned that. I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the body? Or do we need to get him on a disability pension? Okay, calm down. What now? Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Stand there? Yeah, yeah. Just stand there. It's cool. Really? No. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? <laughs> Why is it there, Harry? Uh, um, I don't know, oh, our motor carriage, um, l l l you got a new one, it's okay, okay, uh, I drove it into the ocean when I was drunk. Ah, oh, so refreshing, he just admits it, thank you for your honesty. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of everyone's payslip. I want to, like, answer all of these. It doesn't matter. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> uh, 
I do have this futuristic car. I want to say that, but I don't want to make him more mad. Got my badge right here. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, oh. your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic, and the badge slips out of your hand. Oh, so close. Here, proficient. This is all I have. Ah! Oh! You juggle the badge for a second, unsuccessfully, and it lands on the ground. Some two meters away. I'm so close. Ouch. You strained your elbow trying to catch that stupid thing. Damn it. He found it. He found it, Jean. It's his badge. The patrol officer picks it up and gives it back to you, slippery and cold. cold. And your gun? The man stares at you unimpressed. Let's not drop this. As if having your badge and gun are natural states. Not achievements. Yes, we did. What is it with all these material objects? <laughs> um, I want to show. Uh, I upgraded my. I want to say them. My gun is right here. <sighs> he has it, and he didn't drop it. You're drunk like a berm, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. Um. I, I did. I didn't lose my gun. I have my gun. We're not talking about the fucking gun anymore. We're talking about the vaporized cloud of ethanol coming from your mouth. I didn't drink anything. This is so unfair. He knows you have the gun, and still he's punishing you. I quit drinking forever. It's only me in this boring hellhole now. I don't buy it. Why do you smell like a corpse then, huh? <gasps> oh, oh. Well, we need. I couldn't wash. We needed the pheromones. He is wounded. It's been a long week, and he's handled an actual corpse. Uh... Yeah, I've, I've handled an actual corpse. I don't believe you. You're drunk. You let a suspect escape, a certain classier, because you were too drunk to assess a flight risk. Uh, I did do that. We've read the report, Sari. Lieutenant Kitsuhagis. We know. Um... Um, not taking her in was the right thing to do. She gave a vital clue that led us to the island. Oh, well, if she was nice, I'm not even gonna get into the other suspect who also escaped. Yeah, Ruby something. Oh, <laughs> or the fact that you very likely sold your gun for booze. That's peanuts. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Okay, that. Oh, sorry. Hit the mic. That was that wasn't on me, though. Compared to the seven people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois could between them and the locals. Thank you, Kim. Here comes the cavalry. Yeah! He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. I failed my hand-eye coordination check. That, that, that I did. That I did. Um. Yeah, what he said. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. <clears throat> he brushes a, str a stray strand of hair out of his eye and coughs. He thinks of apologizing. But decides against it. Oh, I want to show the fat. I should you show the. You spend the week with him on this case. What is your take? Maybe I should have shown the photograph. Um, the case? Oh, Kim. <laughs> Got forty-three good cop, good cop points. Come on, come through. On lieutenant Yefretard Dubois. Well, the drinking, the gun losing, also losing the badge. That's so true. Although, he has not been drinking on the job this week. Thank you. See? One week. <laughs> then there's the self-flagellation issue. He likes to apologize profusely, making it sound like he's guilty of at least first-degree murder. 
It's not a good communication strategy for an officer. It's... Oh. Uh, okay, that, that is me. It's just strange, especially in light of his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a true blue moralist. A man of the center, not prone to political outbursts, which is commendable, but also at odds with his behavior. <laughs> And then there's the motor carriage in the sea, something I was not present for. But despite all this, he is a great detective, one of the best I have seen, in fact. Kim! Kim! He can talk human beings into telling him everything, and he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads, however far-fetched and tangential. He is tireless. Madly driven. Kim. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke, which, by the way, I have to disagree with you, Mr. Vikmar, was a valiant effort. He really sang his heart out. Kim. Kim. <laughs> yes. Okay, he did something. It's one of my favorite little details that Jean um, is angry when you succeed karaoke than fail karaoke. I love that. Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, yes. awaiting transportation. Other than that one time. I mean, it's fine that he doesn't bring up the time that we, we stopped to play board games. He apprehended a revolutionary brigada who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. Yes! A new species? Yes! A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It uh, unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the insulindian phasmid. Yes, thank you, Kim! He takes out the photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. The wind blows, flapping the glossy rectangle in his hand. Okay, don't lose it. You hear gasps beneath the howl yes. of the wind. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. As you can see, I'm a pretty okay detective. Fucking hell. Is that... Is this somehow connected to the case? It is! Ignores you, still staring at the phasmid. Detective? Boom, boom, boom? Mm, yes, I believe the pheromone it emits may, have been res may be responsible for the killer's mental degradation. The old man was not aware of the phasmid's presence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. So it is connected. <laughs> I must say, this is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. Yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drum. Yeah. Do you, even, do you even have that authority? His tired eyes follow the photo as the lieutenant puts it away. This is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that's made him forget his Aww. sadness. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Now or now. Never. Oh, wow. Uh, a lot of things. I hope we can say all of these. Um, the previous head of the Debordeaux Union was assassinated by our killer. This is a conversation for when we are no longer out in the open, in Martinez, where yeah. Everhart and Edgar Claire have ears everywhere. The lieutenant lowers his voice just a little. And eyes, too. Your return from the island must not have gone unnoticed. Understood, of course. But a case against Everard would be big. Oh. I would prefer not to partake in anything union related for political neutrality. Yeah. This has to be good stuff for him to backpedal out of it at first mention. Oh, interesting. Uh, the killer, Lilianovich Dross. We have a strong motive for him. Lilianovich? A revolutionary matronym. A matronym? 
Revolutionary matronym? The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name, instead. Oh, that, that's a really interesting detail. This man's mother was Lillian. His Lillian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachol. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me, I just thought it was noteworthy. No, no, keep, keep talking, keep talking. He wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he heard this detail. It must have convinced him. Killed the mercenary in an act of jealousy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old man. To have been hiding for 50 years, like 70 something. A strange psychosexual fixation, aggravated possibly by proximity to the phasmid and its chemicals. He himself gave a political reason, said he had killed an enemy combatant. I'm glad everybody's here too. Also, we have ballistics from the gun, matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh. It's way more than that. Way, way more. Oh, oh, oh. Um. More than that. A perfect, perfect folding mechanism like the Phasmid. Perfect folding mechanism? Get over yourself, Harry. I can still smell the booze on the wind. Come on. God damn it. Doesn't it ever leave? It is there. Like in your bones <laughs> well it will pass in time um well i want to do them all hmm. i also started nightclub in the church what was that it sounded like you set up a nightclub in the church <laughs> yeah and i discovered a hitherto unexplored anthropogenetical phenomenon in there too a two millimeter hole in the world that's great anthropogenot is a great new career for you after police officer i don't care go live in the bail Four kids were living in a tent on the ice. They were going to drown when it melted. It's not optimal, but the building was abandoned, so he put them in there. Uh, it's okay. Uh, they were living there? Thanks, Kim. It's not that okay. Get off this subject now. Also, the phasmid is female. The reeds are its nest. Female? What makes you think so? You had to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female. And... The nesting behavior, too, I think. The... Okay. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? It... Talked about cloning. Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. Thirds to you. It's interesting time. Forget about the rest. Yeah. It had gathered items in its nest. A helmet and a scope. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. They are for attracting mates. Oh. Bowers are built by males of the species who can't afford colorful mating displays physically. This one was plain colored. Still think it was a female. Of course, as I said, I'm only guessing. I didn't see it. it must be robust if it can move a whole helmet with its limbs. I think it reproduced by parthenogenesis. As in cloning itself? What makes you think so? It told me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then it wouldn't matter if it's male or female. The bower would just be rudimentary behavior from before the pathogenetic mutation. He ignores your answer. That makes sense. Yes. Very interesting. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We're probably looking at conservation efforts here. In his mind, he's already planning a nature reserve and knows a good guy. Oh! It had mandibles that looked like hair, and it was completely white on the inside. Yes, but also reed colored, beige and brown, a little green on the outside. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible. The PR value of this is exceptional. 
Picard discovers new species. Maybe even discovers the Insulindian phasmid. No, no, that's too much. This would really help with some of the uh, problems we've been Oh, having. yeah, they're like image issues. Absolutely, this is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This is science, news, human interest. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Without it. Shakes his head. You're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. I love that this is the final boss. Quit while you're ahead. Or no. There's also a dead man on the boardwalk. A missing person I found. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in a boardwalk. Drunk. How did you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, oh. family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Th then you knew I was doing a good job. Still, good work with the missing person, Detective. It's still a point for you. No denying it. More points. I also looked into the mystery of the doomed commercial area. I don't know what a doomed commercial area is. Uh... Rue de saint Just Lane 10, a commercial building where all businesses go bankrupt. I looked into it. Why? That's not what you were <laughs> supposed to do here. There was a fridge we needed and a possible witness. He was just chasing a lead and ended up advising a local shopkeeper. It was okay. Did you know the, the fridge was shaped like an ice bear? Of course. Call it community outreach, right? Thank you, Judith. Dodge the bullet there. For a moment, it seemed like you were just wasting time. I want to say that. I don't the, know what a doomed commercial area is. The curse turned out to be possibly entrepreneurial. Part of my larger investigation, Martinez itself. No, it didn't. It didn't turn out to be entrepreneurial again. Enough with the sort of repay two millimeter hole in the world line. This isn't Paradox B. We're a police force. Paradox B is a fringe science magazine published in Grad. Its mission is to explain theories like telekinesis and intra-isolary power before they get out of hand. Well, if Kim was shot, you wouldn't have the photo, right? I... Man, okay, so if you don't have Kim, you have Kuno with you. I'm, I'm really curious about the dialogue with Kumo, Kuno there. It doesn't look like the lieutenant <laughs> wishes you to push the sure. cut it out. Is indeed what he is thinking. I, confisc I confiscated drugs from Kuno's dad. Who's Kuno? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> You're right, Litno. I don't. You snorted the drugs. I know you did. It's all right. I mean, at this point, anything is but the drink. I, I, will, I think I literally have them. Never did anything. What do you say? I want to take this hot shit back. I don't want to. But you discovered the new species and solved the model. Drugs. So I have to, Jude. Anything that ends the trial is okay with me. Quick nod. You haven't been drinking, she thinks. So maybe yes. this time. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. <laughs> That's more important. Okay. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Now, now you will finally get to know oh. who you are. Wait, I have a few questions before we go about who I am. The man looks westward, impatiently, jingling his car keys in his pocket. Wh who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... Oh my god, shut up. Before? Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coron. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... No, shut up! No, shut up! God, the PE teacher I absolutely hated became a cop. It was the worst. No! No way, I was a flagellant monk. You haven't told us about that. You just told us about being a gym teacher. That explains a lot. Harry, it explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the bicep girth, your inexplicable facial hair. <laughs> bicep girth? Oh god, it really does. It really does. 
They were running around and there was... Coach Physical Instrument Status Cannon. The collection of fallen sportswear I've amassed. The fact that you don't seem to know what homosexuality is. Oh my god. And your moves on the church floor. Which honestly were just jump aerobics. <laughs> oh god. Contact Mike. Of course. Contact Mike. He's been on about Mike again. I hate that guy. <laughs> Contact Mike is a reprise of the most inspiring basic sporting principle of open competition. A 5,000 to 1 rank outsider. Oh, you don't say. Does he also vault an impassable gulf of finance and privilege? <laughs> it is... It is getting cold. <laughs> I'm sorry, Judith. When was this? When was I a gym teacher? In your 20s or late 20s. You've really let yourself go since then. Oh... I mean, I can see, I can see him being like a really fun gym teacher, like the... Do you know that like, I don't remember if it was like a tweet or a Tumblr post, but the one that's like... Where the gym teacher asks the students who the smartest guy at school was and everyone said like the AP Chem teacher. And then the gym teacher's like, no, it's me because I get paid the same as them. Except I get to play dodgeball all day. That that's Harry. You said in Courant? I was a gym teacher there. Yes, you taught gym in Courant. I believe that's the term. Taught gym at a high school. You were a high school gym teacher. Oh, the evil gym teacher was my high school gym teacher too. The smell of sweat and glue. The worn floorboards. Courant is just east of Jerma. It was a short walk every morning to the baseball field. Or high school. Oh. Harry. Your goings on with Kuno, Andre, Asel, the whole thing on the ice. That's why you are so juvie. So juvie. His smirk suggests barely contained love. Oh man. You're a juvie cop, don't. Why did I join the RCM then? The regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. All that. Oh wow. You, every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach gym. She, leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries and incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. Wow. It's because of her. Okay, I see now. I knew it. I knew no normal human being can run like that. He's an honest to God gym teacher. <laughs> Why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. You really went with it too. Really maximized the damage. Was she called Dora Dubois? Dubois? It was Dora Ingeland, I think. You've said her name, but you weren't married. You were engaged. Where? You weren't even married? Wait, Dora Ingerland? Something like that. Half Vazan. Vasa is where beautifully and impossibly blonde people come from. Oh boy. We weren't even married. No one is married anymore. This is Revachol. When was this? God, I don't know. Six years ago, she was way before my time. Way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten over it. What the hell is wrong with you? Six years? He's a different breed of human gym teacher. Six years? Yeah, or seven. You're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one normal year. That and Dora Ingelon really tore you a new one. A big one. Old man, two old years equal one normal year. Who was she? Incredibly bangable. Huh? She was extremely fuckable, Harry. Gorgeous. A gorgeous bourgeois woman. Wayfish. Like a Welkin, Like a basically. Welkin? Snow Welkin. Blonde Welkin. Heartbreak Welkin. <laughs> what is happening? Pain Welkin. What is happening? I've only seen a picture. But it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look. 
The sun is going down. It's time to go on. I hope I can ask all these, but... I think she taught in the Académie des Arts, east of the river. Way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle-class chick or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? Go talk to that. <laughs> I'm, I'm using this. In other words, he's heard enough about this. Did you give the headless fawn rider to Dolores Day? I tried. Didn't take it. Didn't take it. Oh, maybe that explains why we know all about Welkins, because she was into, like, board games and stuff. Okay, am I a dirty cop working for La Puta Madre? No. No, because the suspects seem to think... You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No mob boss would take you. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. Aww. He would immediately backpedal out of it. I told you it's not that bad. Aww. Precinct 41, what kind of station is it? Us? We're the bloody murder station, haven't you heard? With the bad guys, no one likes us. That's not true. Jamrock is too big for one precinct. You're just understaffed. And everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. I think Ruby was pretty paranoid. Yeah, I wonder if she, like, misinterpreted the, the can opener thing. As, like, I think it was meant to be, like, we're just really good at cases, but she took it as, like, can opening people. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're being kind. It is an understaffed station, and the district is too big, which is why we need to. He tilts his head northward. Get back to it. We left Torson and McLean to run the Sea Wing. It's not good. Torson and McLean? Mac the Torso Torson and Chester McLean. They're not fit to run a wing. Believe me. Things are shaky as it is. Yeah, Mac! Mac! Mac glued his eye eyes shut. They aren't them iconic, though. Torson and McLean. Iconic duo, I take it? Yeah, not like us. Two clinically depressed old men. Where's the contrast here? We are garbage. Garbage? We wait, come on. He he glued his eye his eyes shut. And the sea wing is? God. There are four wings, Harry. A, B, C, and D. We're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and I reconceptualized it as a task force. It was a mistake. There's also a lot of outside help involved, not only me. Other losers too. Aww. He's anything but a loser. Although he would like to be seen as one. It's cooler that way. <laughs> I love it. And prices? Ptolemy Price? He's the son of the old Price, one of the founders of the RCM. Oh, Ptolemy. He's one of the most highly regarded men in the force. You're lucky. Somewhere under the curved roof of a former silk factory, shaped like a ladybird with two chimneys, police captain Ptolemy Price sits behind a heavy wooden desk. Resident medic Nix Gottlieb pours him coffee. It's silent in the captain's office. They speak of change, the city, the tension on the streets. They speak of the events of April and the blood on the streets in May. Oh. Did we recently shoot up a church by any chance? Oh yeah, I've been I've been wanting to know that too. So he remembers that. Yes, there may have been a raid on some churches. It wasn't good press. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town, to be clear. Thanks, Trent. What happened? Why did we need to go there? Our enemies were hiding in a church, to the best of our information. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit tier right now. You have to wait for it to go up. He means it. The RCM and its enemies will not be discussed on this coast. Fair. Your clearance will not go up while you're within earshot of the Union headquarters. I work in a bloody murder station? Okay. It's not the bloody murder station. It's an old converted silk mill with green desk lamps and a coffee corner. A lot of good people work there. Hard. Every day. Oh. Jamrock is the largest ghetto in Rivershaw. Faubourg, technically, but uh, it's divided into 11 districts. Jamrock only is us. Oh. The press will blow over. Jamrock is lucky to have you. 
and it's often considered to be the greatest of the districts. You're lucky to have it. Thank you again, Lieutenant. Fasman, I need to tell Lena about it, about this ASAP. Who is Lena? She lives at 1113 Tabernacle Road yeah. in Jamrock, remember? Cryptozoologist. She lives in Jamrock on Tabernacle Road. She told me about this phasmid. Tabernacle? It's on the way over. Near where you live on Perdition. Oh, she looks at Vigmar. Fine. If we're gonna drop you off anyway. Oh. She and her husband were conducting the search for the phasmid. It's their discovery, in part. Yeah. They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for her. Oh. She is going to be over the moon. Ah, oh, yes. Watch out, or she'll faint. Lieutenant Kitsuragi, what will you do now? Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all these. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. About what? Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. He takes a look around into the deepening shadows of the street and pulls up his collar. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready, infiltrate, investigate. Distant traffic. A scrap of newspaper drifts by, carried by the wind. It says, tensions rise in Terminal YC in light of the Debardeur strike in Terminal B. Among representatives of every industry in Coal City. Him? Want to do that at Station 41? Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. No, I meant investigate. Come work in Precinct 41. Work with Price? I'm flattered, but I don't know if I. A crooked smile quivers on his lips. He wants to, he wants to. Would fit him. I'm crazy enough can take the stress. He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one, but he's at a loss. Kim? Flattered? You're Lieutenant Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you oh. even considered. I would have to tie things up in GRIH first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbor. Lieutenant turns very serious all of a sudden. And we also have a huge caseload, Lieutenant. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, <laughs> even. I do like the sound of that. <gasps> Achievement unlocked. Recruit Detective Kim Kitsuragi. <laughs> Friends forever! Returns her smile. He's really considering it. We're, we're basically married now. I'm not... I'm not ready. I'm not ready. But... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Okay. He needs... Harry can have... Okay, we can spend a few points as a treat. We can... Volition was useful. Oh. Esprit de corps. I like you. Thematically cute to have that many unspent points. Ready for anything. Exactly, exactly. I like Esprit de Corps. And then Encyclopedia was useful. I do like Inland for... Okay, then we have some for backup. I'm ready. Good. He looks at you, then Vigmar. Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> Tron brought his motor carriage. It's a 20-minute drive to Jamrock. Under the night sky, the great district sleeps. A black chessboard of old wooden houses. 80,000 living souls inside. Fire traps as far as the eye can see. From Main Street to Precinct 41. 
atop the motorway to Boogie Street, forking into the darkened horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de saint Jérôme, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Square bullet hole murders that we couldn't solve. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Lickmere? Yes. Dubois? Of course. I'm with Trant. Really? Nick Scottley looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Potomney Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in the office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the RCM. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minot, of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? And... them just teleport through the model. incredible game I, like I don't even know what to say I've had such such a good time playing it it's definitely going in like top five if not top three games it's like like I don't even know what I could possibly play next because it was so so good like what could fill the void and like like I really need to sit down and process it a little bit but as I do like after every episode but I want to see the voice actors because I want to see who shared um I want to see if Sylvie shared with um Dora and Dolores but I mean it's did you have the dream at the fort? Yes, I did. Chat made sure. I stayed. But like, everything about it, the art, the design, the... the music... It's like, it's legitimately so funny. All we can do is hope we get more from the setting deadline. Exactly, exactly. Um, I feel like you'd enjoy one shot. I, I have. Um. Okay, voice. Oh, I want to see voice actors. Oh, wow. Joyce, working class, the pigs, Lillian, the picker. Wow. Judith Kuno S and Dolores Day were the same. I need to see those more. He's 
see Leo. Cab leader and Rosemary. Wow. Oh, I thought Titus and the scab leader were the same. Oh, here. Oh, wow. Look at that. Whoa. Okay, we know that. Joyce, Lena, Lillian, Sylvie. Working class. Oh, yeah. Here we go. To oh, these are the final cut. I see. I see. Wow. Gart. Sad scab. Elizabeth, Klausia, Alice, Kuno S. Can't keep up. Pigs. Oh, this has been a pleasure to. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. Thank you. I've. I'm definitely so glad I streamed it because I'm sure there was a ton I would have missed. I probably would have never spent my points at all. Um, no, I'm still, I have to process everything. Like I had such, such, such a good time. And I, the things I did purchase, I bought, um, cause it was super on sale recently. I bought, um, Planescape Torment. But I don't think I'm quite, ready to jump into that quite yet as another heavy story oh yeah it's all the european people who stayed up thank you i'm, I'm sorry but thank you thank you this has definitely been my longest stream so far i'm sorry euros the thing I bought, um, it was also super in sale. I bought the Sexy Brutal. Torment is very introspective, too. I brought this, I think the Sexy Brutal might be, uh... I like doing a story, more story-focused thing on top of, like, my strategy games, like Ruina. Um... I thought the Sexy Brutal might be a nice little in-between. I mean, nothing, nothing could ever, like, quite match this. I still want to... I'm scared to do it, because if I do it, I'm going to have to commit. Um, but I'm still interested in Mystery of the Druids. And I Divine Cybermancy. But I still haven't quite. Oh, in loving memory of my father. Um, there's a cool walk after the short story. That's that. I saw it was recommended in things, and it felt like a... Uh, if it's short, that's good, because I wouldn't mind um, something a bit a small in between while I figure stuff out. Oh, yes, everybody. Oh. Oh. Everybody in Europe, in Europe you can go. Issue the dudes is a riot. If I'm scared, it will break me. But I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need help. Uh, favorite stat Shivers. We ever stream in. SMT game. I wanna... One day, definitely. I'm particularly interested in Nocturne and Digital Devil Saga. Um... I don't know how accessible... Oh, and you're in Romania! I actually lived in Romania for a few months. That's cool. But yes, everybody in Europe... Everybody in Europe, please sleep. I'm not going to say anything more important. I just do want to get through the credits. The voice actor French trailer. I need to look that up. Everybody, you can good night. I'll just wait through the credits, but... I can answer questions if anybody... But thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Um... Yeah, like, maybe... <laughs> thank, thank you, everybody, and thank you, everybody that's been here and joined me. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I could provide something interesting with this. Um, I'm really glad to meet everybody, and glad I could have. Again, I'm still. I'm still new to like, fairly new to streaming and doing let's play. So if I could provide something different, I'm glad. 
That's what I want. That's all I can really ask for. But thank you, Bryn. Thank you, Bryn. I wanna... I haven't... I've been wanting to talk to you about how your playthrough went to a bit more now that I'm finished. Stressfully, leave Ziggy the dog. A lot of credits. This is nice. Thank you for streaming the game and also getting you to play. I'm glad. I was trying to. I was quite. I was quite excited when you jumped in. Um, after I. Dialogue system. Interesting. Unity. I really want to look more about this. Mankind, be vigilant. Be vigilant. We love. Oh. Oh, I can't wait to watch some Let's Plays of my own now. I've been really looking forward to Super Great Friends. There it is! Oh, yeah! There it is! The title screen perspective. Oh, man. Just see, like, whirling in rags. Okay, I'm... It's not even that late for me, but I'm worn out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. I need to... I need to get some food. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Gotta watch Jacob Geller's essay. Okay. Thank you. You can give me all the recommendations and all the fix. Fix. All the fan art that I can now look at after waiting months. Um... Thank you, everybody. I'll figure out something. I haven't quite decided on everything, but... Likely... Sexy Brutal and Mystery of the Druids will be the more story-oriented story oriented things I continue with. Yes, good night, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you all.